Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. It is episode 41 of our Halls of Ardenvul Mega Dungeon by Richard Barton using the old school essential system by Necrotic Gnome. My name is John. I am your referee for the evening and our minimal amount of players today we have. Hi, I'm Mike. I play Gorand, the fifth level dwarf. We'll get you go straight to Ted. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I'm Ted. I'm playing Mortis J. Gabliano and his faithful hench barbarian Yoast tonight. Uh, and we're both itching to level up, but we're going to do a little adventuring first. Yes, they're going to brave it. So we're doing a little experiment tonight. It's a little intimate little intimate uh, session tonight with just the two. Actually, the three of us are actually the OGs of the original group. We've been playing together since the three of us since 2003. So it's been mm -hmm. 20 years. Uh, both David and Matt are dead to us tonight. So mm -hmm. we're, we're going to give it a whirl. So, yeah, it's going to be Yost in the in the short people. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I guess Yost is probably Races. just be like a master blaster in the, in the uh, Thunderdome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or we should ride him like that. That'd be great. Okay. <sighs> so the whole rest of the party, that's Nyal and uh, Onweir and Avaricios and Lizbeth are all in the NPC cloud. And uh, they just decide <laughs> to hang back in, in uh, uh, Yakin's, Yakin the Proud's tomb. Um, and uh, while Gorand and Mort and Yost decide to do a little reconnoiter. So it is the... 30th of Lagardios, the last day of Lagardios. It's about 5 p.m. in the world above, and they are currently in a relatively small chamber that at the far end of it has a very large sarcophagus, which they have uh, removed the top of and discovered that there appear to be the relics of Yakin the Proud's very famous red suit of mail and his large spear and his really dope-ass helmet with a big old... Um, uh, Ted, what's the word for the big plume? A plume, yes. Um, or does he have a a crest of some kind? A Is crest, it feathers? Yes. Or... It's like a crest, yeah. Does um, it look like a Roman legionnaire's helmet? Is it yeah. that kind of crest, like yeah. the horsehair broom mm -hmm. thing? Yeah, oh, yeah cool. Yeah. Exactly. And nice. but the key part of Yakin the Proud is not there, which is his remains <laughs> are not in there. Uh, although the armor was laid out as, as if. Um, it was dressed on a person, but on top of the chess piece, um, was a, I believe what is an, an ivory block. Ivory. Yeah. Ivory, an ivory coffer. An ivory coffer. Yeah. Which you are very leery about. You have not reached in or yeah. touched any of the items in there right now. Um, oh, sir. Yeah. And also for people for just doing that, they are on the, um, the halls of Thoth level, which we've been calling the debouchement. Right. So right. After escaping, this is pretty time. brave of us. I would like, I would like to just Ted. We have to go out and just rack up some experience points tonight because <laughs> we don't have to share it with anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, should we just head back to the gladiatorial school and uh, <laughs> <laughs> just leave all the out. money? Yeah. Just leave them a note. Uh, Who runs Ardenvul? <laughs> Master Blaster runs Ardenvul. I love it. <laughs> So um, we had discussed a couple of things um, yeah. on the Discord, John, and that was basically like while they're in the NPC cloud, um, we wanted to fill in some of the cracks in the map. Um, we have a corridor Airport. to the south of the fountain room, and we have that corridor that goes west from Laryl's like Laryl's little shrine area. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we are just going to try and fill in some of those some of those areas, right, Ted? But we're going to be pretty cautious just because we have no backup. I mean, granted, we carry the party ninety percent of the time anyway. <laughs> work, work, work. Before we do that, John, I have a question that just dawned on me. Um, we've read the 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 lives of Laryl or whatever it was called, the, the Adventures of Laryl, mm -hmm. uh, and we know that Jackin is one of his padres. No, Yakin was a comp uh, compatriot of Arden and Vool. Mm -hmm. But wasn't uh, Laryl? No, Laryl, Laryl, Laryl is Laryl? way after them, bro. Laryl's like legends are like way later than they are. Yeah. All right. Question still stands: If if Yakin is associated with Arden and Vool, was there any other members of their adventuring party that we would have read about? Like, oh, don't forget about you know, Muffy Nine Fingers, the halfling, or whatever. Uh, yes, probably, but I do not have that information handy right now. Okay, fine. 
So it is, it is um, not relevant to this room. I can guarantee you that. So let's let's do this though, um, Ted. Before we go, um, you and I are not the scholars of the group, nor is Yoast. However, um, without touching anything, John, can we look on that ivory, um, the ivory cask that we think probably has his ashes in it, or something like that, mm -hmm. for any kind of writing, whether or not it's something we understand or don't understand? Are there any engravings on it that depict anything? No um, touching. No so touching. It's, yeah. So it's a. Uh, it, it's not actually. It's very very plain but well made. Um, mm -hmm. it's about 30 inches by 12 inches. So it's actually kind of large. Um, and about eight inches tall. Okay. Uh, but there's no mm. markings on it at all. But uh, unlike the, unlike the tomb itself, which is a huge slab of marble, um, and it has like lots of carvings of struggling warriors on like all four sides of it. Okay. Um, and no, and it's sitting right on the chest plate of the armor inside the uh, inside the sarcophagus, right? That's correct. Yeah, and don't forget too that the equipment inside um, uh, looks like far newer. Pristine. Yeah, looks pretty pristine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that was going to be my mail. It's yeah. a mail shirt. It's not doesn't have um, plates, right? Let me check here. Da, da, da. Heavy. It's red armor. It just says red armor. Oh, okay. Mm, let me see here. <laughs> if it doesn't have the armor statted out, Ted, then we can guarantee it's not worth anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. My, yeah. I, oh, I, oh no, here it is. Uh, 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 Scarlet Banded Mail. Banded Mail, that's yeah. right. You did say that. Yeah. I just want to make a point that I learned much to my dismay that magical armor doesn't resize itself for people in this edition. So... Yeah, the uh, goblin and the dwarf are like, screw this room. I can't pick up that spear. My head's too tiny and the ears stick out too far for the head helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Not wearing that armor. I'm going to look like a ridiculous. So, so I would like to know, though, John, from my dwarven um, knowledge base here, can I, uh, without touching anything again, um, just look at you said that these items in there were much newer than they probably should have been. Yeah. Can I like ascertain anything about like the actual quality of their work or um, if there's like a la like layers of dust on them or a patina that of aging on it? If I can kind of determine um, if they are magically preserved or if they are just someone threw them in there at some later date, then it then makes sense for this guy being buried. Yeah, you can you can definitely tell that they are not magically clean, and I should so it's it's more a state of cleanliness and um, non-wear in relativity to all the other ancient artifacts that you've found, which are all obviously very powerful and, and, and um, well-made, but they're also very, very old. Right. Uh, right. Um, so a lot of like a lot of things that you found have been tarnished in some manner. And um, a lot of the stuff here in the room has been tarnished, but um, everything, the armor and the spear and the helmet all look very, shiny and polished i don't mm -hmm. mean new as in like new um new mode you know what i mean like a, like a fashion or anything like that you know it's just um or new new levels of technology or anything like that no it's just it just appears to not show the same level of tarnish and wear um it it, it has like dust on it like a little bit not much got in in, in the right. you know the well-made sarcophagus but yeah so they appear not new as in new fashion but new as in like they look like they were just made correct even though it was a thousand years ago that's correct so ted it seems to me that these are props that they use for a burial right or they're so magic that they simply show no evidence of wear although I john mean, did say they didn't look magically like um preserved so let me ask you this john do, does anyone know how jack in the the proud died uh i don't think so actually there's no legend of it. I mean, if he got eaten by a dragon head and they couldn't recover any of his stuff, then it would make sense that they would dummy up some stuff, you know, to, to throw in there with them, right? You um, let him go to the afterlife without a spear and a helmet. Right. John, mm -hmm. using my awesome dwarven abilities, dwarves rule. Let's remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to try and detect like construction tricks inside this sarcophagus, like um, a sliding, uh, you know, bottom to it or anything on the plinth that the sarcophagus might sit on. Um, I just want to really and, and 
I don't care how long we take. We could take a turn to do this or like whatever, but um, I'm going to get out my little hammer and, and, and tap it and see if there's hollow spots or, or anything else that might be, be in there. Sure. Yep. It'll take a turn. Definitely. Okay. While he's doing that, um, Mort's going to start poking around the perimeter of the room looking for uh, any kind of, are there, because you said the room is well decorated, I think frescoes and things, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, looking for things we've seen before, you know, eyes or hidden switches or anything like that, uh, something that might slide the sarcophagus over, um, right? anything sure. like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you guys take a turn and you guys are very, very thorough um, and you find nothing out of the ordinary. Hmm. All right. Well, the only thing remaining of interest in the room that you can see is the um, is the ivory coffer. Yeah. So, Ted, I think at this point we wait for the rest of the party to detect magic on stuff and and see if there's anything worthwhile. But I don't really want to stick my beard in there and, and pull something out and get blown up. That'd be a quick end of the session. <laughs> I'll persevere yeah. if you blow up. Um, yeah, I think besides which, I think it'd be fun if we everybody was here for, for figuring out what's in the sarcophagus. Mm-hmm. Um, safety aside, I just think it'd be cool if we were all part of that. So I'm, I'm fine with that. We didn't find any hatches or anything. So actually one quick question on the, you said the lid just kind of slid o- o- away really easily. It did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything on the underside of the lid? Like, if you could read this, you're you're dead or nope. Good question, but everything seems okay. normal. Yeah. <laughs> Let me yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, all right, man. What do you think about doing that tunnel that goes to the west first? Because my feeling is it's going to link up to that spider chasm room. Uh yes. Now, uh, that's a good question because um i have to go through my notes it's going to take time trying to find that room but i do feel like there was something about that other those other doors that might have been dangerous there's a statue in that room there is a statue in that room and we know that it flattened one of the uh, um the darlings yeah but yeah. let's just see if we can connect like that those always so, yeah. yeah let's just see if we can connect that stuff okay um so what okay. about so, this then for marching order? Since yeah. we don't want Yost to be by himself, right? Because that would be you know bad for an NPC. Um, right. Why don't you go do the infravision trick? I'll stay with Yost. We'll keep like the light as dim as possible, and then maybe follow like you know 30, 40 feet behind you with the rope, right? So Yost should um, snag one of the lanterns that somebody else had. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so also. We- I have a, yeah. I have a mark for Elizabeth Lantern. If you just want Elizabeth to hand it to him before we put their put her in the class. Uh, let's fill it before we go. Well, how much oil is in it, John? Uh, you have a lot, actually. Um, okay. Yeah, she just filled it. That's right. Six, twelve, six. Um, I have some torches on me too. For if for some reason we yeah, run into just make it easy. Just make it easy on me and just leave just leave it as it is. You have you have um uh, six twelve six twelve sixteen sixteen plus five is twenty one twenty one turns out of twenty four. Okay, that sounds good. So yeah, let's take get killed before then. So Yost will have his spear and the lantern, Mm -hmm. and uh, Mort will go first, sword and shield, and infravision and rope, Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, actually maybe Gorin. Oh, you've got a shield and sword or shield and axe as well, don't you? I do. And the other thing is, is you're stealthy, so I'm not stealthy. Right. right. Okay. I'll go first. So it's a small enough party. So give me distances between members. How, uh, more, well, we want to be. We want him to be outside of the the lantern radius, John. So I think is that fifteen. Yeah, thirty feet forward from us. And then Gorin is where? How far back are you from Mort? Uh, I'm right with Yost, like thirty feet back, like maybe thirty five feet or whatever. Just so we, he's not in the lantern light, right? So his infravision's pinging off, and he can stop oh. us before we alert somebody. Mort, you mean you mean Gorn is like behind? Gorn so is behind. Mort is, Gorn's, Mort hold on. is thirty feet ahead of Yost and Gorn. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Mort is going to be uh, unbelievably cautious. <laughs> cool. Um, um, so also, there's a interesting thing that I've been neglecting in the Arcantian levels that might be just kind of a fun thing to do if you have nothing better to do when other people are using a turn to do something. 
um, it's kind uh -huh. of a cool thing that's in the module is that, you know how I always describe like how in the Archonting levels, especially all these Thothian priest uh, sort of things that the, the walls are well-made stone, but they obviously were once covered with plaster and frescoes that have since faded away. If you want to take a turn, there is a one in four chance that you can actually glean some decent, useful, useful slash flavorful info from any random piece of fresco that might be on a wall. Oh, that's so, awesome. So basically, like, if you want to take a turn to, like, look at the walls, I would roll a D4, and on a 1, you would find something useful, and then I have a chart of just kind of, you know, just interesting sort of things. Sort of like the um, the uh, graffiti thing on the stairway up yeah. on the pyramid. Yep. It's sort of like that. I so love it. Just keep that in mind if, if you're in an Archontian okay. level, that that's always a thing that you can do. I think yeah. that's that's up to Mike, because I'll be in Infravision. I'm not going to be able to see the frescoes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we kind of decided I, Infravision I sort of should. Like if, if Ted were in a room like the sarcophagus, right. And you and I are looking yeah. for traps and looking for junk, then they could be in the hallway looking at frescoes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay cool. So, um, I am totally fine with, and I think we talked about that on, on discord as far as the, when we pick up with the rest, like the, the rest, well, we always just have everyone join wherever you are, but we'll just say for the, for, uh, you know, we'll just say for the sake of things that the rest of the party is in the stairwell to the North leading back up to plunger town with a right. door shut mm -hmm. behind them. Um, and yeah. Okay. So one we, more, one last thing as we, cause there's always one more thing, man, as mm -hmm. we are leaving, uh, I would like to get a pot of red paint and a brush from Laryl sack. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. And, uh, so he's just going to have that. In, oh, okay. Cause yeah. Let me, let, I have some ideas about when we should do that, Mike, you, uh, okay. Let me know what you think, but, um, right. <clears throat> Okay, so I just want to be clear that when you make you make your way back out of the chamber of Yakin the Proud and back up to the main east-west corridor, you yes. feel the heat coming from the east, and you know what lies beyond. Are you yeah. not going to investigate that further? Not right now. Ooh. Okay. No, that's we're waiting for the read magic of that spell. Okay. We're All letting. Right. I want to let Onwear trip that trap. <laughs> the, the image wavering in the flames haunts your haunts your dreams as you turn away from that. And you continue uh, continue westward as the air gets cooler. See, I can't tell the difference between John sort of telegraphing danger and John telegraphing. Here's a really cool thing you don't want to miss. Because <laughs> they sound the exactly. same. Exactly. Why not both, yeah. Ted? Why not right. both? <laughs> so with your Yos uh, feeble torchlight, the three of you venture forward into the darkness. The the uh, the faded ruins of our Kantian life uh, dis, um displayed on either side of you as you truck down the corridor. Everything is very, very quiet. Okay. So, yeah, Mort will sneak ahead, and we'll go past the corridor that goes towards the fountain, and we're going to go into Terra Incognita, or Arden Incognita, I guess. Okay, so by the time... Are you guys all moving at 90, or is Yost moving at 60? I think we're all 90. We're all at 90. Okay, so by the time you reach the... The intersection with the um, that leads south towards the fountain. A turn, another turn goes by. Yeah. What do All you right. do? So as you um, as you approach that southern corridor, a continuous stream of light issues mm -hmm. forward from yeah. there, letting you re reminding you of its presence. Yeah, yep. actually, I'll just take a look down that corridor and make sure I don't see anything has changed in that room from this. I mean, I'm 30 feet away from the fountain, but uh, yeah, well. It yeah, you don't if see. It looks the same. It, it seems to be the same. Yeah, the five foot diameter um, uh, fountain, which has a crouching marble baboon in the center, and clear liquid right. is pouring from its mouth. Right. I don't see any goblins in there or anything like that. Nope. So we will head west. Okay. Uh, to be clear, you do remember that there was a passageway leading south out of that room. Yep. That's okay. the other that's hallway that's that we're talking about hitting. Okay. All right. So, but you are going to continue west. Very good. All right. So you uh, you go down another ten feet. You got your mapping ready there, Ted? I am. I'm mapping. Here's look. I just added ten feet. Yeah. Then after that ten feet, uh, the uh, the quarter continues on to the edge of your torch, uh, edge of your torch light. Uh, Mort, your your infravision is not pinging off anything all the way 60 okay. feet down. But uh, so you can, uh, we'll, we'll put it like this. Mort, I'll do it from your point of view because with InfraVision, you could yes. at least tell distances. So yeah. it goes on for um, uh, at least another 60 feet west. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, 70 feet from the corridor. Yes. Or from now, the don't, intersection. Now, now don't draw the north line because there are ah. two there are two passageways that uh, two corners basically that where it goes directly north. Okay. Right where you're standing, it turns to the north. Okay. Then it goes for another twenty feet, and then there's another passageway that goes directly to the north. Yeah. Okay. Nothing but darkness issues from both of those, at least with um, Mort's uh, infravision. Okay, so I'll move up ten feet and look straight north. Okay, it's just it's it's darkness. You can see that it um, there's a small corridor that goes on for 10 feet before it opens up into a very large chamber, but you would have to actually step through into the corridor to get a full breadth of it. Okay. And nothing um, is, nothing is beaming in your infravision. Quiet. There is the smell of general, like large, like space in there. You know what I mean? Like it's not as closed in like you are right now. So I think we should investigate that room, Ted, because I don't love the idea of going another 70 feet down the corridor without knowing what could pop out behind us, right? Yeah, I was just um, wondering, like, looking at the map, the amount of space that's there, whether that room might have two entrances or it's not as big as all that. But I agree. I don't want to go all the way down to the end of the corridor without knowing what's in here. So we might as well hit this one. So I will move up that 10 into that 10 foot corridor. Mm -hmm. and slide up to the, the corner and kind of look into the room and look around as best I can. And then uh, okay. if I don't see anything that makes me afraid, then I will um, summon uh, Yost and, and Gorand. All right, Mort, you crawl into that northern uh, and you move through that 10-foot uh, short passageway. It opens yeah. up into a perfectly square, large chamber. Um, it is 60 by 60. And you are you are entering in twenty feet from the eastern side, on the southern end. Something like that. Yep, you got it. Now, all right. As you as you step forward into the room, you can actually see that directly in front of you, like ten feet in front of you. Once you uh, enter the room, there is a long iron balustrade. I'm sorry, a stone balustrade that basically extends across east to west. Like completely wall to wall? Mm hmm. Wall to wall, yeah. All right, let me, and, I'm going to draw this in a different color here. Like something like that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And there uh, is, um, and uh, centered in the midst of that balustrade is actually a wide 20 foot wide staircase that goes down like a grand entrance sort of staircase, right? It goes down. Oh boy. And can I tell how far it goes down, like 10 foot down or 20 foot down? Do you lean up like against the, you don't have to touch it, but do you lean up and like, go up to the balustrade to sort of get a, a look? -see? I will move up, cautiously move up to the balustrade being short and small and sneaky. Mm-hmm. And take a gander, yes. Okay, so once again, this is just like differing shades of gray and black, right? Because um, there's definitely no heat in here, all right? But you definitely see right at your eye level are the tops of six 15-foot tall statues. So you're 15, a foot, 15 feet above the ground. Okay. So the staircase is about extends into the room about 15 feet uh no it's it actually is a, a very steep staircase it actually extends about um uh only about eight feet into the room eight, eight feet from the balustrade i'm okay. just gonna draw 10. so something like that yeah and then what like three statues on either side of the stairs uh, so against the walls on the east and west, spaced oh, evenly on right. the walls are are six. So three on each side on the east and west walls uh -huh. are six evenly spaced large statues, 15 foot tall. However, in directly against the north wall, in the middle of the north wall, is a seventh statue, which is dominant. Can you guess what that statue is? I bet it's Thoth. Thoth. It is. Now, the... Ooh, um, ooh, not that big, jeez. Something like... I have to move these around. Uh, they occupy <laughs> each statue occupies a, a, a square, John. Yeah, basically. Okay, a little bit less. It was I correct in assuming that this other corridor was also an entrance? That's correct. Yeah, that seems to be an equal entrance into the room. Yeah, 
Now, the uh, the uh, all the six statues against the walls are fifteen feet tall. However, the statue of Thoth against the uh, northern wall is much larger and grander, and it's actually twenty five feet tall. So I would say like the entire room is probably about thirty feet tall, like from Whoa. ceiling to some ceiling to floor, right? And you're fifteen feet up, right? Um, all right. So all right, Thoth right. is. Uh, uh, Thoth is in his ibis headed form. Okay. And like the other statues, they are all standing in the classic ancient Arkantian pose of left foot advancing, hands by their sides. However, you, um, you can immediately tell that Thoth's statue, um, one of its two foot. I mean, we're talking a big statue. 25 feet is larger than even the, the great statues that you've seen in the Spider Room and in the main debouchement, you know, uh, by the ghouls in the West, uh, right? Uh, those are all 15 foot. This is a 25 foot statue. Um, one of its two foot diameter eyes is empty. Ooh. It's an empty socket, but the other one is full with stone, okay? Um, now, the remaining six statues, all right, uh, on the east wall, Going from your position northward, Ted, is Sekhmet, who is a lion-headed deity. Okay, so the closest one to me is Sekhmet? Yep, on, on the, the east. On the right-hand side. Yep. Yeah. On the, okay, yeah. Sekhmet? Yep. Okay. In, in the Who's middle. Lion-headed, right? Lion-headed, yep. In the middle is well, one that you are now becoming more familiar with is Set in his set animal form, right? So he's a humanoid form, but he has that, that dog-like um with, uh, the with, ears, the, with, the, the, with the square ears you know yeah um and then on the uh, uh towards the north is jackal-headed anubis oh shit on the east okay on the west going from south to north you have uh, other familiar gods you have osiris uh horus falcon-headed horus and isis stand along the west wall all right um okay so uh south to north on both of those right yeah man when is bass gonna get some love up in here so set is carrying <laughs> is holding a spear upright you're you're just thinking about the old deities and demigods aren't you mike <laughs> nailed it <laughs> That was my childhood right there, man. <laughs> right, baby. <laughs> Set is holding a spear upright. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. And um, the uh, Osiris is carrying a flail and more like like the, the traditional like farming implement, right? Like the flat-headed thresher it sort of. like nunchucks kind of thing. Mm -hmm, yeah. You, you've seen yeah. Im like images of Osiris with that. Um, yeah. The and I think there's I think segment's got something cool too. Hold on. Um, no, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, they are all stone statues. You said yes. They are all stone. Yeah. Of like the, like like precious stone. You know what I mean? Like like not precious, but uh, porphyry or porphyry. alabaster or something exactly. like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and that is true of Thoth as well. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Are they are they painted or decorated, uh, or are they just carved? They forms? they are they are not painted, but they are carved from differing you know rocks of different shades. To okay, so be, so that the skirt looks different than the chest. Yes, which is which is okay. common, which you've seen in in the other like more right. grand depictions of of uh, Thoth in particular. And the spear and flail. Is it an actual spear and flail that he's holding? Uh, it well, they, yeah, they they appear to be, yeah, they, yeah, they were, you're actually right. They are they are very large and oversized, but they appear to be actual weapons. Yeah. And these you said were 15 feet high. Um, and are they on plinths or standing right on the ground? They are standing on the ground. One, their left foot advanced. Every single one of them, all seven of them. All right. Well, um, okay. Uh, more is, the floor check covered, is the floor covered in asps? No, it is not. <laughs> Very dangerous. <laughs> but it is sort of like the angle, sort of like when he descends in, they get the, that, what was it, Anubis? Uh, whenever, right. yeah, that's, 
you know, you're, you're up high, right? So you're seeing like the tops of these statues and looking down upon this sort of grand scene. There's nothing on the floor. It appears to be stone. It's dusty. Does not, not appear to be, have been many people in here at all. Right. If it, if um, any. All right. Mort's going to make sure his holy symbol is prominently displayed. Thank mm. you. Maybe you should come tell us to do the same. And, and I think, uh, well, very quickly, is there anything else up on this sort of balcony level? Uh, no, nothing on the balcony level. Okay, he'll back up and um, inform the boys. And I say we go, let's check this room out, man. Yeah. Uh, we all prominently put our onk symbols on, John. Mm-hmm. So we look like a World of Darkness cosplay group. Sure. And we oh, go, sure. we go, I, before we go down the stairs, is there anything like observable? There's no bodies crushed at the floor, at the feet of any of the statues. There's no, no, nope. um, nothing like that. Right. No, nope. we don't see any bones scattered around. Does nope. it look like, uh, from the dust on the floor, does it look like any of the statues have been moving around? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. If it looks very quiet, it's kind of peaceful. It's just a little bit intimidating because of the size and, yeah. you know, authority of the figures depicted no altar no seating or anything like that in the room no and, and once yost comes in with the lantern do we see frescoes or other details that mort wouldn't have seen no uh but his light does kind of uh show you the the the, the interesting colors of the room right just that it's much more colorful okay. than you would have expected so no frescoes and no other exits trap nope. doors hatches ceiling openings windows high above not that you can see all right. Um, Yost, you can hear Yost left off, like, let out a soft exhalation of awe as he sweeps his torch in a grand arc over the balustrade. Lantern. He's got a lantern. Lantern, sorry. Um, I'm going to say, like, your, floor... your initial... I'm going to say this all has taken a turn. Yeah. yeah. Is the floor tiled, or is it just, like, the same dressed stone as the walls? Um, it is dressed stone. Okay. So no, nothing that looks like a pattern or like a picture depicted on the floor or anything like that. No. All the stone is the same color. No areas are like colored like red or like like colors for like, you know, like a symbol or anything like that. Nope. Okay. Um, um, I have, hold on. Before we go down, Ted, can I just, uh, I want to tap on the flo- steps on each step mm-hmm. before we go down them with my spear as far as I can reach John, like I'll try and just kind of put my weight on it and see if mm-hmm. I can trigger any kind of pressure plate or anything like that. Sure. No, everything seems normal. Okay. I do the same thing on the floor before we step onto the floor. Seems okay. Okay. You know, you know, it'd be really useful right now. If we had our copy of the practical liturgies of Lord Thoth here. <laughs> um, because, because Mort wants to try praying in front of the Thoth statue. That's what Mort wants to do. We've got a holy oh, yeah. symbol. He's astonished by the power and majesty of Thoth in this ancient place. He's starting to feel it, brother. Yeah. So, yeah, Mort wants to cautiously approach the large statue and get down on his knees and pray to Thoth. Okay, Mort, uh, you step off of the stairs onto the into the room. Make your way to the statue. As you are uh, looking up, um, and you realize it's like towering above you 25 feet right that's massive just a tall. little goblin yeah, yeah. um uh gorand and yost as you kind of as both of you are sort of on the bottom step um watching mort do this you see and mort you hear behind you you see the statues on on um opposite sides of the room the statues of set and isis okay one on either side they advance forward <laughs> into the room with heavy footsteps, right? Like big clouds of dust kind of uh, pop up up near there. And they're moving very like um, like automatons, right? Like they appear to pay no attention to your presence at all as they, as they stare down each other. Okay. Um, oh my God. What have I, I done? <laughs> Isis. Isis. A, you hear like a shink and in her smooth abdomen, her narrow abdomen actually opens up, right, and she uh, and uh, she actually removes from inside her actual abdomen a small eight-inch tall ebony statuette, 
which appears to be identical, but much smaller, like a, a smaller version of Osiris, but made out of ebony. Oh. And she takes her hands and she reaches into her abdomen and she takes out this small little piece and she bends down and places it on the floor. Okay. Oh, and Set, that was a different, a, another um, statue that had weapons. Set has a, has a, a, a long, thin axe. Okay. Wait, Set has a spear. Isis has an axe? Uh, Set has an axe. You told uh, us he had a spear. No. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yep. It's my mistake. Oh. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's a spear. It's a spear. We're going to call it a spear. Um, so set, uh, uh, jerks his head down and sees the statuette, the statuette on the ground and he jabs at it and the statue, uh, shatters into like a number of small pieces, like four pieces, like on the ground. Okay. Behind you, Gorned and, uh, Yost, you can hear. Uh, across the two openings that lead back out of the uh, room, you can hear a shing, like a, like a shimmering sheen almost. And uh, looking back behind you, you uh, you don't see anything, but you definitely heard something like a shing behind you. All right. Uh, like, like we've just been trapped in here. Yeah. <laughs> Set writes himself up, places his spear on the ground, and he opens his uh, his set animal jaw really wide, and he coughs forth three huge, enormous, wriggling snakes on the ground, which immediately lunge towards all of you. Fancy enough, there's three of you. So uh, one snake lunges towards each of you. And then you hear, at the far end of the room, Thoth himself shouts out from his ibis head his beak his ibis headed beak he says isis must restore him but only i can revive him oh. okay uh, no i don't have to ask for you are not in melee and there is no spell casting so we can go directly to initiative <laughs> <laughs> i rolled a 6 uh, you go, Ted. Yeah. Uh, I'm really going to miss Mort. <laughs> okay. Initiative. Rolling a D6. I got a three. So there you go. Johnny wins. Okay. All right. Give me one sec. Oops. Oi, oi, oi. Great job. We'll give you the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! All right, dude. My lame, uh, my lame. Well, it's not lame. I love this book, but it doesn't have bass in it at all. Oh, wait. We better get. Uh... Here we go. I, I know this is gonna be blasphemy, man, but I think this cover is better. Well, I do like to see Odin on there, but uh, let's see here. Egyptian myths. Bass, where are you, baby? Oh, there's Isis. Yeah. Isis was... Uh... Oh, yeah, Bass is pretty good. Okay, so for the kids at home, there's old Bass, if you don't know her. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, what is um, Gorn's AC? Uh, Gorn's armor class is 19. Okay. It lunges up the stairs at you, Gorn, and you uh, you put up your shield, and it banks off of the shield. Yos. <laughs> oh, goodbye, Yost. Uh, Yost currently has an armor class of 12. Also, uh, Yost nimbly steps out of the way, cursing under his breath. Okay. Um, and while one uh, leaps at the surprised Mort as Mort is gaping up at this uh, encounter before him. What's Mort's in? Oh, what? What? oh. What's your AC? 19. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, you're going to take one point of damage, and I need you to make a saving throw, please, versus poison. All right, hold on. Uh, oh, save versus poison, you say. All right, well, fortunately, Mort's save versus poison is a six. Six? Oh, elder races. Yep. Jesus. That's right. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, man. I mean... <laughs> 
You walk around all day being green and slimy. You just get used to poison, I guess. I don't know. All right. I'm, so. a dwarf. I'm not green and slimy. My save is off those six, bro. I don't know. <laughs> you guys <laughs> picked the right crew on. for this encounter. All right. Yes, roll it. That's a dwarf stank that uh, provides that little special. 14. <gasps> okay. Damage. You are able to ward off the venom um, as it, it seeks to enter your veins. Oof. Okay. And we're now um, immune to it for like an hour. You are, you are now in melee. It is the bottom of the round. Go for it. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead, Mort. All um, right, Mort will uh, stab a snake. Uh, their AC yeah. is 13. 14, 14, I'm sorry, 14. Roll a seven. Ah, I, I get a plus seven to my seven, so that's a 14. Okay, you hit. Wow. Uh, and that's a D8 plus five damage. So I roll a nice 12 points of damage, John. The pin strikes the snake. 12 points, Jesus. All right. Using Laryl's pin. Okay, so um, you're not adding that extra humanoid bonus, right, for the pin. That it? is not for the pin. That is for the black iron spear that... Ah, uh, right, right. right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. However, uh, uh, if it's not dead, it has to make a save or it will be slowed. That does not matter, uh, Mort, because we'll say, like, as it leaped at you, you uh, dodge nimbly to the side and jab the pin directly under its neck and do, like, a big old Conan, you know, just, like, headlocking yes. it. just... Yes. Um, and we the, want the green arms. Rip it to trans. I kill the snake. That's great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I got all excited there. Okay. Doran? Yes. Why don't John, you kill the snake? I'm going to actually attack the one on Yoast. Uh, okay. Attack the one on Yoast. Uh, so you are actually engaged with your own right now. You know that, right? So, oh, you, there's no option to like attack the uh, different one or you no. Know, you'd have to declare that you wanted one. to. You to, you'd have to declare next round that you were going to be. Okay, so yeah. I'll just uh, take that eleven you're... plus three for my hit, um, and that's going to be AC fourteen, and I do a D ten plus one. I'll do eight points to it. Eight. Okay, so it is still up and squirming and hissing at you as your spear jabs yeah, right. into it, Yost. Yost is going to attack with the Black Iron Spear. He gets a 15. Hit. And he does a D8 plus all the damage. Double check here. His strength is plus three to damage, and the spear adds. So he's got plus four to damage. So D8 plus four. Nice. 10 points of damage to Jan Snake with his mighty black iron spear. Nice. He also jabs into it and it wriggles and rides on the tip of the spear, but is still up as well. Top of the round, everyone's, uh, everyone except Mort is in melee. Uh, Gorand and Yost, do you want to declare? Yes, I will attack the one on Yost. Okay, so you're going to fighting withdrawal from your current enemy? Yep. Okay. Um, Yost is going to attack the one right in front of him and look at the dwarf weirdly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Roll, for, roll for initiative. I got a six. Well, I got a ten. All right. Six. Nice. Oh, Take roll. that, John. Roll again. I got a six again. Oh. Suck it. <laughs> oh. I got a six again. Take that, John. Keep, keep going. <laughs> keep going. What did I get? Oh, I'll get the fun. oh. Uh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay. That's pretty good, though. Wow, what a battle. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> so there is... Uh, okay, fighting withdrawal, so um, it doesn't get a bonus against you, but uh, yeah. You're attacking. Yeah, okay. So it's still it's actually still the same opponents. Okay, so one against uh, Gorn. Here we go. Is a miss, and one against Yost. Go fish! Go fish! Jesus, I'm bored. Crappy for the attack rolls. Uh, all right, so you're able to easily defend against the snake's attacks. Go for it. It's going to be I'll two, a, two against Yost. Yost. <laughs> miss. Yost. Miss. All right. Um, with the snake wriggling on the end of his spear, he does some uh, complicated uh, baton twirling and uh, skewers the snake oh! with a 16 awesome. for an additional six points of damage. Six. It is still up. Mort, what are you doing? What? Did you, oh, all, not all snakes are created equal. Mort, did you I move guess. up or are you just hanging back? Um, Mort is going to rush up and um so the, one on Yost. the one on Yost. Okay, go for it. Because that's his NPC. So Mort rolls hit. an 18. I think that's a hit. And then a D8 for damage. 
Six, so 11 points of damage. 11, okay. Mort, once again, puts off the finishing touches. Two kills for Mort already. Um, there's only one left, which is coming up from behind Gorn, who is very aware that it is there, but it is looking like it's going about to attack Gorn. That's the end of the round. Top of the round, no one is engaged. We're going straight for initiative. Here we go. I got a three. Again. I got a four. <laughs> okay, your guys' yeah, turn. You can all gang up on that snake if you want. Go roll. Yeah. Do you, do you mind if I go first, Ted? I want to try and get a kill, too. Do it, do it, do it. Uh, that's 13. Yep. 13? 14. 14's a hit. 14's the AC. <laughs> Two points. Oh, Two points. It's still up. <laughs> a glancing right. blow. That's all right. Yost and Mort. Uh, Yost says, thank you for defending me, my little friend. I will stab this creature for you, but I missed. Oops, I'm very sorry. Mort, it's up to you. Yeah. Will we get all, all right, three? So Mort, Captain Kill Steel, do Mort, it. Snake Killer. Mort, serpent Bane. Bane. Mort, Serpent Bane. Oh, 17. Mort is doing it. Dude. Seven plus five is thir 12 points of damage. 12 isn't going to do it. Man. Someday I want to be as oh. cool as you. <laughs> this appears to be the the doughtiest of snakes. So, oh my your, God. your moniker has not yet been applied, Mort, but uh, you definitely have its attention as it is <laughs> definitely going to be attacking you. Yeah, um, I figured. Uh, okay. Um, AC nineteen uh, for Mort. Let's see. Uh, hold on one second. I just got to read something real quick. Oh. This is the part oh, where they explode okay. or okay, okay. Yes. it it misses it also does not appear to be deterred by the fact that its companions have died and that it is uh it is very very wounded which is strange for a snake yeah. um it is also yeah. much larger than normal snake. Yeah. it's probably but, not a real snake but you you dodge nimbly out of the way um yeah. uh everyone is engaged does anyone want to move in melee i want to move up into its cornhole Okay, Let's roll for initiative. <laughs> I got a five. The snake have cornholes. Go for it, Mike. Everything poops. Oh, yes! nicely done. Oh, you guys beat it. Okay, nice. go. All right, I'm gonna go. Come on, go there you go, baby. AC 16 and uh, D10 plus one. Go, go, gadget, go. Ten points. Okay, and Gorin puts an end to it, uh, pinning it on the end of his spear. <laughs> All right. Those um, of you so, listening on Spotify have missed a lot of gesticulations and faces here. As <laughs> as the last one dies, the um the uh, you notice that the two statues are still facing off each other. The four pieces of Osiris's little statuette are still on the ground, and uh, uh right. Set's mouth is still wide open. Ted, I think we got to go reassemble the statue, dude. I I do too, and then we have to like well, present it to Thoth. Yeah, it says Isis must restore him, but only I can revive him. So maybe if we reassemble it, Isis will do something, and then we have to move it. I don't know. but Well, we could try that. Why don't you do that with Yost? I'm going to go look and see if the entrances are indeed blocked. Okay, Yost and I will go back down the stairs and try and put the statue back together. Okay. Gorn, when John, you... I'll go, and I'll go up the stairs to go see if there's anything blocking our egress. Okay. Uh, uh, as... Uh, Gorn, as you race up the stairs, you can, um, and uh, you look, it, it seems to be like an open passageway. As you move into the spot where you would actually enter back into the, um, into the small uh, corridors that uh, attach to the east-west corridor, um, you actually hit against a force field, like a dunk. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. you're, you know, it's not like an electric shock or anything like that, but you're definitely, there's just something solid that you cannot see in front of you. At the same oh. time, Morton Yost, you approach the pieces, um, and uh, you can pick them up, and it looks like you can probably reassemble them, if not actually like, um, you know, like glue them together, unless you've got something, you know. Um, uh, right, but so it, what but, I'm thinking but, is, if if I can like put them together, and like, can I reach her abdomen and put it in there? Uh, you might be able to. So you, uh, what I'm going to say is this: if you're the taking the lead on assembling it, right? Like Yost hands you like the final piece, and you've got it basically like together in your hand, very gently, and you are literally right. like, in the shadow between both these massive statues of Ses and, uh, Set and Isis right before you. And then you hear right above you on your head, you hear like, oh, and a another gigantic snake just plops out, just blah, right out of Set's mouth, like directly in front of you, and raises up 
right in front of you. It's like directly in melee right now. Um, I need you to roll a d6. Don't roll a one or two. Okay, you are not surprised. You hear the sound before it actually drops. Roll for initiative. Go, Ted, go. Mm, oh, I rolled, I rolled a D8, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you still I failed. Minute. Okay, so it's it's directly in front of you hissing. Okay, so Yost uh, will immediately stab it. Okay, uh, Gorn, you also see it as well. It's move phase first. Do you want to move back? Yeah, I want to... Um... I'll move back, and as I'm moving, I'm going to be like, doors are definitely sealed, and then I'm going to charge it with my spear. Okay, cool. All right, so everyone cool. can now um, attack it again. All right, so... Go first, uh, snake, snake Bane. Oh, Yost only rolled a four. Okay, it's a miss. Um, what's that? It's a miss. Mort. So if Mort attacks, he has to let go of the statue. Uh, what is he attacking with? Yeah, you. Um, yeah. I'm imagining he's holding the statue with his hands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would. It, you wouldn't be able to to keep it whole in one hand, right? So, um, why don't you try I, and put it back in her abdomen while we take care of business? Just a little goblin. How high is the abdomen? Like seven feet? I don't know if I can reach it. So what I'm thinking maybe is I take it over to the Thaw statue. You could reach. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. You if, you if Gorin, or sorry, if Mort thinks he can reach the abdomen cavity, he'll do that. But if he doesn't, you think that you think that Yost could reach it. You probably couldn't. And if I let go, the thing's gonna fall apart. If you let go, yeah. All right. So next round, just switch. You stay out of it this round. And you hold it together, and then have Yost take over next round. Oh, because then he's got to do like a whole fighting withdrawal thing. It's okay. Screw it. I'm gonna let go. I'm going to fight a snake. All so right. you let the pieces fall to the ground? <sighs> no. I'm going to run for Thoth's statue. Okay. Uh, all right. So unfortunately, you are engaged in melee right now. So you have to declare that you are going to do that next round. Well, Mort is actually Yeah, it dropped melee? out right it's in front of you. Melee with it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, all right. So he's just going to hang back. Uh <laughs> And uh, hug the statue to his body and defend himself. Okay, got it. All right, okay. and Yost missed, right? Uh, Yost Gorn. already missed. I still get an attack. Gorn still gets to go. All right. Uh, that's going to be AC 16, John. Yeah, that's a hit. It's a AC 14. Okay. I didn't know if this one was different than the last one. Um, and damage is going to be a three points of death. Okay. To it. Uh, it does not kill it, but you do wound it as it pisses at you. Um, it, now that would it, be weird. It is now its turn because you're the one that harmed it. It's going to attack you. Your AC is 19. Yep. Ooh, Ooh, baby. It hits I you. thought you were going to hit that 18 there. <laughs> it's like... Did I hit a... What did I end up rolling? An 8. It was an 8. That was an 8. Okay, yeah, I was cocked in the in the visual. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it, it misses you. <laughs> As you bat it aside with your shield, and now it is the top of the round. Everyone is engaged. Uh, now declare melee movement. Okay. Now you would have to have Yost yeah. withdraw, take the statue, so, and get it up in the abdomen ca cavity. Yes. So, yeah, so Yost is going to withdraw from the snake and attempt to get the statue from Mort. Okay. And then Mort will re-enter combat. Okay, so what I'm going to say is because you're just well, I would say to handle to to, to give it away with care. I would say yes. that um, that would be your action for the round, Mort. Although you could still move. Okay, for both of them, both yeah. Mort and Yost, that's yeah. what they're doing. Yost could actually move, get the and get the get the get the piece. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah, worth it. So man. I do too. So that Yost is backing out. Taking the statue, Mort's carefully handing the statue, and we're going to lean on Gorin to occupy the snake for this round. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. roll for initiative. And and I don't know if it um, is just flavor. I got it, Ted. If it's flavor or what, John, but I'll, I'll be banging mm. on my shield with my spear and like trying to keep its attention. Okay, cool. it's it's it, it definitely seems to be focused on you, and you guys want initiative. So we'll say the exchange takes place um, without issue, as the snake does not seem to be focused on the two of you. It, it does seem to be focused purely on Gorn. Gorn, you win. Go ahead and attack. All right, snakey. Ooh. Oh, yeah, take a 20. All right. 
All right. So that's just regular damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's still a 20 minute. Oh, 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 my. There it is. All right, uh, Gord. 11 uh, points total. Yeah, it's like lunging at you full body, and you're just like, nope. And you just like root the, the butt of the spear in the ground as it impales itself on you, the end of your spear. Just bleh, um, and dies a messy death. Oh, it dies? I, I thought this one was bigger than the Isis other. And, nice. Isis and Set remain stony faced and absolutely rock solid, but dominate. Like their shadows are like right over you. It's like, you know, you're like basically dancing all around the two statues in the center of the room. Um, all right. That was, um, that's the end of combat. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So Yost now has a statue. So what does Yost do? He's going to try and put it in the abdomen held okay. together. Okay. So um, Yost carefully reaches up and it's at the top of his height as well, right? As he reaches up and he places it back into the ab, uh, in, into the abdomen. Um, the abdomen piece like shuts back over the statue and you can hear a very soft fluttering sound come from the north end of the hall where Thoth uh, reigns. And you can see that something has actually issued out from its uh, from the tip of its beak and is slowly fluttering down like a leaf on the wind. And you can see that it is a small slip of parchment that eventually oh. drops onto the ground. It says, that wasn't chicken. That's awesome. Uh, let's go look at the parchment. Oh, I, I, I'm also, I, I'm sorry. The abdomen did not close back over. The abdomen is still ov- still open. So the 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 uh, pieces of the, the, the reformed pieces of the statuette are still sitting in the midst of its abdomen, visible. Did it, did it repair? Uh, no, but it is, it's it's sort of like just resting there. Like Yost placed it really carefully. There might be something on the parchment to give us a clue on the next step. Yeah, um, I think so. that's good. So let's go look at the parchment. Okay. All right, uh, Mort, you pick up the parchment. Sure. Okay. You see that there is a phrase written and it says with knowledge and it's, it's like in quotes and it says with knowledge, I prevail. Uh, yeah, that's, um, I will, uh, more will kneel down in front of Thoth and, and say that phrase aloud. Okay. More, you speak, and clearly you say, "With knowledge, I prevail." And you hear behind you, in Gorin and Yost, you see, you see uh, in front of you, actually, right, right in front of you, actually, uh, Set bangs his spear on the ground upright, and he takes a step backwards from from Isis, right, and he moves backwards into his original position, and like nothing ever happened, and his mouth shuts. You see all the corpses of the snakes that are arrayed before you, all these huge, like Conan like snakes, all crumble into dust and whoosh away into the wind. And you hear a distinct shink coming from the, uh, from the balustrade. Um, so the... at the same time, you hear Yost exclaim in uh, awe as he points at the abdomen of Isis and you can see that instead of an ebony the ebony pieces of a statuette you see the glint of gold reflecting oh. off of his lantern. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Let's go back and look. Yeah, right, let's lo- go check that out. Looking into the abdomen you see that the statuette um has not only been reformed but appears to be uh completely changed into solid gold. Is a perfect statue oh. of Osiris. With with flail with flail and onk right like crossed across his chest. Oh, that right. was awesome, That's pretty dude. cool. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Where's my? Uh, um, uh, John, can I reach it, or does Yos have to reach it? Uh, Yos is the only one who can reach it, unless you have other means. No, that's fine. Okay, Mort will. Um, uh, or sorry, Yost will. Uh, um, say, oh. Uh, great and mighty Isis, praise be, and reaches in and takes the statue out. Okay, so you you can see Yost reach in, and he he just you know he expects it to be heavier because it's made out of gold, not ebony now, right? But um, he he kind of gently takes it, and he's like, oh, and you can see he's like, oh, it's it's heavier than I thought, and he's like, oh, and he's and he pulls, and you can see his muscles straining, um, and he's like, he looks behind you, he's like, it's really tough. Do you still want me to take it? Um, it's really heavy. It's heavier out. than it looks. 
It's for such a giant, for such a tiny thing. Uh, I'm wondering, Ken, yeah, if this yeah. is like the, if this is the first step of something else. Yeah, right? that's like where I'm at too. Like, like he's he's able to kind of lift it, but like. It, I mean, if it's solid gold, it should still be lighter than that. Is what we're, you're saying, right? Yeah, it's eight inches tall, right? So it's like you know, it's not that not that big, right? You know, so it'd 50, be heavy. Twenty pounds, we would be like okay, but making yeah. him strain his muscles is weird. Yeah, it's like I can get it if so, I try hard enough, but it's it's something's it's not right. No, 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 no. Don't don't take it out. We we're doing something wrong here. Okay, so we've restored it, but now Thoth has to revive it. She can form it, right? So yeah. um, try touching it with an Ankh holy symbol. Here you go, Yost. Okay. Uh, he's, he's, like, he, he, he's like, okay, and he tries, and he's like, no, it's still heavy. Yeah. No, no, this is, so Isis must restore him. Okay, so that's happened now. So only I can revive him. So we need to go back to the statue of Thoth. Ah. Uh. Um, I guess we could carry it to Thoth, but that doesn't seem right because of the weight. Hmm. Um, can we go and John, other than the scrap of paper, has anything changed with the Thoth statue? No. Stance. Okay. And what about the statue of Horus? Uh, none of the other statues seem to have been phased at all. Like nothing has changed. In fact, the only one um, that is still like even set has returned to exactly back to its original position. So only Isis remains in the center of the room. She's in the center so, of the room and her abdomen is open. Yeah. And that statue is there. And Rel relative center, just to be clear, you know, sure. Yeah. She's like on the I don't Western know, side. John, if, how much we're supposed to know about like Egyptian, like myths. Right. So you're not, um, you're not. we don't so, need to know. That. Yeah. You don't need to know. Yeah. Here's what I'm thinking. There is also a statue of Ice Osiris in this room. I just want to look and compare the two. Right. right. Are they identical? They are identical, yes. In pose. Yeah. In pose. Mm -hmm. Is there some key difference between the two? Like the little one has got no flail, but the big one has a flail or no. something like that. No, I identical, except in except in material and size. Let's go look at the the big statue and maybe there's a why don't you do that, dude? I'm going to go see John. I'm going to go poke the force field with the door and, and see if they're still there. Those are now. Uh, yeah. So you, you approach different areas and it, it definitely is open. You're free to leave. It appears. Um, mm, all right. This feels like I wonder. Um, oh, dang it. All right. Well, do we have something like there's no onk slots in this room, right? Nope. Uh, or, or or not, what's that, Mike? No keyholes or anything like that. Right. Well, so I, I, I'm wondering, I, Ted, maybe if this is just a test of strength, if we just have to have Yost yeet it out of there and put it before um, Thoth. I can no, handle it, boss. I can, I can take it. It's just really heavy. Probably best for the sack. Or if you want, I can carry it, but I would not be able to to, uh, to wield the spear with ease. Right. Can you carry it over to the statue of Thoth, Yost? Do you think can, you can manage that? I can definitely carry it. It's just heavier than I All thought. Right. Okay, let's do it. Let's pull yeah. it out and take it over to Thoth. Okay, so he... he he uh, he pulls it out. And you can see he's like straining a little bit. He's like, oh, and um, you can see his, his arms like visibly drop as like the weight of it comes out of the abdomen and into his hands. You know what I mean? It's just like this tiny little thing. Um, and uh, he's like, oh, and he's hefting it. And he's like, geez, if I had to guess, I'd say it's about 100 pounds. Wow. It's heavy. It's like two large grains of <laughs> two large sacks of grain. It's like crazy. Oh, and he, you can see he's like, kind of waddling his way over to the to to the statue and he shouts back and he is he's like okay now what it's like i think he should set it down directly in front of of thoth yeah with pleasure yeah. all right <laughs> it's like yeah. you can hear like a solid like kadunk as he sets it down yeah and there's no like little slot in the floor or obvious little base plinthet or anything in front of thought there not that you can see does Thoth have a pop open abdomen or something? The 
the parchment came out of his mouth, right? Mm-hmm. Way yeah. up, like 25 feet up. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to save that piece of parchment, by the way. That's getting folded up and put in my okay. pocket, mm-hmm. keeping that one. Mm-hmm. Just um, for hilarity, we could put that statue on top of David's spell books. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you my spells! <laughs> So that is it's um, it's basically like a um uh it's like a 10 it's like a 10 slot thing if you want to take it with you right so it's 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 definitely something that you would have to basically clear i believe all of your slots for him to carry it at his pack right right um right but um you could you could if you've got i think you've got the you should have plenty of room in, in the Laryl sack uh, yeah, we uh, well, Laryl Sack, of course, is another issue. But um, in terms of getting it like back to the stairwell room, we could, yeah, just you know, Mort and Yost share a few things. Yeah, right? uh, if you want to take um, it, it's up to you. I'm not saying yeah, it, it's okay to take it. John, do we know how much it would be worth? So it, <laughs> <laughs> hundred pounds of gold. Yes, that is the question I was waiting for. Um, so it. You know, for all uh, t- intents and purposes, what it looks like to be to you is that it's like unbelievably dense gold, right? Like like some sort of super gold or something, right? You know, there's no knowledge <laughs> of like chemistry or anything like that. So you don't really exactly know what's going on there. But you know, gold's a very heavy, precious metal. Um, you are convinced by the weight of it that it must be absolutely solid and it must be something strange, you know. The workmanship, in, ad- in addition, is very, very um, fine. Um, so it looks like it's in, in, inordinately valuable in equivalence to its weight. And it looks to be probably worth 5,000 gold pieces. Oh, damn. Mm. We're heading back to the inn right now, Mike. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ted, what do you um, think about crab walking this back and dropping it in the stairwell so that we can, when the rest of the party is awake, we can talk about using Laurel's sack. Um, yeah. And, and then just leaving it there for now and then continuing on with our little mini delve. Right. Why don't we, this is actually a good place for a break. Um, and why don't we, uh, we can just discuss real quick what you want to do with that statue and we'll pop right back in a couple minutes. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. So, what are you guys going to do with that statuette? I'll take it. Yeah, back. we'll uh, we'll we'll swap out some gear so Yost has his hands free and not caring so much. Mm-hmm. He's going to hoist it up. His biceps throbbing as he hauls it back to the stairwell room. If that's cool, I mean, I don't want to like abuse the MP shield thing, NPC shield, but so if they're in there. Uh. Okay, so I think with the 10 slots that he would have to divest himself of pretty much everything, right? Um, no, because he has an 18 strength. He actually has like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 slots before he drops encumbrance. Oh, okay, that's great. If we don't mind walking slow. He doesn't even have to put anything down okay. except yeah. the spear. Which... So what so rate what, would he, what rate would he be at? On there, Ted? Can we just like free up a couple slots for him? Because I have... Um... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, if if um, uh, Mort takes the large bronze keys and his bedroll, mm-hmm. then... Um, and, oh, no, somebody has to take the spear. Which, Mort can actually carry the spear. He's just not strong enough to use it. No, right? but the idea well, is to put it in his backpack so his hands are free, right? Otherwise, no, the idea, this doesn't make sense. Remember, there's equipped and then there's packed. Oh, right? I'm looking at packed slots. You're right, John. So, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. I can there's drop actually two. only There's only nine equipped slots, John. If it takes 10 slots, then no one can carry it. No, no, no. There's there's equipped, which is like his armor and his weapons and stuff like that. And then there's his packed items. So on the right yeah. side of the sheet. How, yeah. how, how so many can pack if, it in his backpack, dude? Yeah. Okay. But so how many packed slots does he have open right now? You tell us. Yeah, you tell us. Fifteen. Oh, okay. That's great. So what what, what the, have to... so if you fill ten right. of those up, what will that drop his movement to? Sixty. 60. Okay, that's all we need to know. That's cool. So if you're cool with that, okay, okay. you throw it, you throw it in the backpack and then that means that the party will be moving at 60 as you follow Yost back slowly towards Fine. the thing. You cool with that? 
Um, yeah. Let me just double check because I just I just remembered he is carrying uh, two other things that I don't have written down here. One, I'm going to say two, the combat three, four, and then five, the five, assessment five, of the statue and everything like that. A total yeah. of two turns have passed. Okay. Um, so we can just get the statuette back, Ted, and then we can just continue on. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. Mort is going to take a couple things off of him to make sure he doesn't go below 60. Just, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So but moving at we can totally do it. Moving at 60, it's going to take you... Let me see. One, three, four, five, six. A like couple turns. Uh, yeah. Which is fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say because it's like kind of... I'm going to call it three. It's it's like two and change, but it's like right at like two and a half. So I'm going to I'm going to round it up to three. I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a little bit cruel because um, you're in the middle of the room. That's cool. All right, we Fine. can handle your we can handle your arbitrary cruelty, John. All right, moving pretty... on to a new sheet. Hope everyone saw my okay. little Twitter pick of my. <laughs> I did turn trackers. Did I, did I get the? I couldn't read it, man. I, I tried. I spent a long time. Oh uh, yeah, to there's decide. a there's a hidden Easter egg for my players. I've got it like, on my screen here, but I I think it's like in, in handwriting that is only decipherable by the math, yeah. possibly. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. It's very true. All right, so um, it is now. We're gonna six, have. It is now. I have possessed by Laurel One Eye, but that's the only one I you know. We're, we're starting to get into the territory. You're gonna want to think about the time of day. It's about six twenty, in the afternoon now in the evening. I should say. Right. Uh, don't mind me. <laughs> okay. Okay. And um, all right. All right. So you slowly, carefully, and like Yost is like, oh, as um, as one of you guys has to carry the lantern for, so you can see. Um, right. And then uh, he finds the rest of the crew uh, napping away, uh, studying spells and praying in the um, stairwell, and he drops it off. And, and then we come in and we're like, hey, guys, uh, you know, no big deal here. Clonk. All right, we're going to be back. <laughs> Here's a whole bunch of money that we can all retire on. <laughs> yeah, just uh, don't mind us. Yeah, uh, just going out and killing snakes, and making gold. We'll be back. See you later. Cool. All right. So you Whoa. are now you are now at the stairwell. Where do you go? Okay, you want to just go back west go, again? Yeah, let's go back and let's see if we can connect that hallway to the to the spider room. Okay, so right, moving so at 90, 90. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so we'll, I'll just call it one to make to even out my meanness with some niceness. Oh, that sounds good. Um, and you are what I'm going to say is you are now um, at the western entrance to that statue chamber. Okay, you're right at cool. that intersection. Is what I'm going to say. You're at. That sounds good. That okay. sounds good. Okay. Uh, don't mind. Don't and mind we'll zoom me. our plan, John, with uh, Mort leading the way. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mort, looking uh, down from where you are, you can see that it goes for 20 feet. It, it continues on to the limit of your infrared so it moves a total of 60 feet from where you are in that intersection. All right. Oh, whoops. I am... <laughs> Whoa. I'm not set to draw mm -hmm. lines. I'm not <laughs> drawing circles there. Uh, pardon me. Uh, okay. All right, so I'll draw out a 60-foot corridor and no apparent turns or anything. So right at the 60-foot mark. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so uh, you want to just do one short on the northern one there. It does turn again to the north. There is a corner there, and the corridor continues onwards from uh, the edge of your dark vision. It does not appear to be a dead end. Okay, so I'm going to creep up to... Um, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, so John, if you can see my pointer, I want to just stop kind of right here. Okay. Because at that point, I should be able to see that corridor at the its full length. Yes, you can. So, to my map. Uh, you can. You can see that it does indeed go all the way to that doorway at the far western end. Now, On when you sides. when you approach that northern corridor. All right. And you're and you're looking satisfactory. You're like, ah, OK, I think I might know where we are. Um, uh, you can hear coming from that door. You're like, OK, I got that. Let me check. It. Let me look around the corner here to the north. And then your head whips back around to the west because you hear an awful, inhuman, high pitched, long shriek. Long and wailing and high pitched like just at a continuous pitch and then dies off like almost pitifully at the end uh, coming from beyond the western door now does it sound to me like it dies off because it's falling down a chasm 
no, it's like it's more like the um the pitch uh like dies like it you know it's like I I can't mimic it because my voice is low but it's you know it's like high pitch and it just sort of like it yep. tails off. Would I say that's the voice of a goblin being squashed by a statue? Inhuman, as in like something you've never heard. Like um, picture like the uh, the way that they did the Black Riders in Lord of the Rings movies, like that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's festive. Thanks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not scary at all. Okay, all right. Uh, um, that is unexpected. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to cautiously move up to the northern opening there and look. Okay. Like approach to the corner and kind of poke my head around, kind of look. Sure. Is the sounds coming from the west though? It's coming from the spider room, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mort, you uh, turn around the, to the north. You can see that it extends for ten feet before it opens up into what appears to be a much smaller chamber than the one that you were in before with the statues. Um, you are, uh, you're. I will say that you're in that ten foot corridor. Okay, looking into mm -hmm. the room, but not having stepped into the room. You it appears to be a square chamber that is 30 feet by 30 feet, and you are entering on the far western side of the southern wall of it. Far western side of the southern wall. Okay. Yeah. So, like one more. East. Yeah. You like got so? it. Mm -hmm. You got okay. it. Um, All right. Now, there. So, is moving up to that that opening and looking into the room kind of around the corner a little bit, but not going in. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. It appears to be in or a very ornately decorated burial chamber. Okay. There are, um, uh, numerous images on the wall. Some basically faded by time. Uh, they depict, um, uh, priests bowing at the feet of a seated baboon. All right, and the baboon, the, frescoes? the hmm? frescoes, frescoes, yeah, yeah, frescoes, like paint, painted frescoes. Well, they're faded and stuff like that, but you get these images basically that there's priests and they're bowing in front of a seated baboon. You know that baboon is oftentimes a representation of Thoth, um, and you can see that the uh, the representations of Thoth as a seated baboon, the left arm appears to be pointing forward with the with the arm, the right arm down at its side. Okay. Um, and you see that in the center of the room with the heads facing towards the west from north to south are three sarcophagi spaced evenly. Okay. So, um, frescoes all around. Three sarcophagi in the center of the room, the heads of which are. So these are like, when you say sarcophagi, are we are you describing like Egyptian style, right? Like yeah. where there's a figure on the front, kind of you know arms crossed type of deal. Or are we talking like more just boxes? Uh, let me see. They might. Um, they do not have images on the front. There's a term for that. What's that called? Um, of like a F raised. F not an effigy. It's like a different specific term for like a raised um, effigy on top of a sarcophagus. But yeah, but there, there, there is not that though. There's stone. I should know it, but I don't. Yeah. Um, Richard actually um, has the name okay. of it here somewhere, but I can't find it. I'm, I'm wondering, Ted, before we go doing this, which I love this, but do we want to figure out what the shriek was before we, uh, something comes through that door and like, you know, pummels us? Well, <clears throat> We did talk about going and um, checking out. We think because we think there's a spider alcove at the very tip of the chasm there. Yeah, I kind of want to have the rest of the party for spider alcove area. Maybe. Okay. okay. But, I mean, if we run out of stuff to do, I'm here for that. But I'm I'm just like maybe we should <laughs> we're at least rule, man. <laughs> like we're gonna run out of stuff to do. <laughs> maybe Yo, maybe oh, we should Lord. at least investigate that door and see if there's like horrible activity going on in there that's going to catch right. us on a wars. Fine. Um, I'll have uh, more back out of the room and kind of walk back to you guys and explain what's in there mm -hmm. and then go up to the Western door and listen. Yep. Okay. So you move to the West and you, and you listen, you can hear that there is definitely some sort of scuffle going on. You could hear the ground 
um, shake a little bit as of like heavy footsteps hitting it. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Scratch that. That is that is not the case. Um, you don't you don't hear that at all. I'm mistaking for something else. Um, uh, you do hear what appears to be the sound of a very frightened small creature. Uh, Mort, your sensitive ears, and because of your background, you can peg it as probably the very fearful whimperings of a very very afraid goblin. Yeah, at least at least one. Um, and otherwise, you hear silence. And it's basically like 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 whimpering and gobbling. Just here, please, 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 no, no. Um, tell me about the door, John. The door is the typical Arcantian, um, uh, wooden, wooden with door. iron iron bands. It has a doorknob, like a latch, a lock. Can I open it from this side? It, it opens in whatever way you like it to open. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if I. Uh, is there a keyhole? Can I like look through the keyhole and? Uh, no, there is not. All right. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to open the door, like, just enough to like look through it, ready to slam it shut and run away if necessary. Okay. You open the door carefully and you look inside and you see a very strange sight. First of all, it is a room that you recognize. You see at the very far yeah. end of it, the great chasm looms. There is a definitely like a, there's a full on like breeze in this room because of the vast openness um, from, the, from yeah. the far side, right? You can see the recent span that has been created by the halflings that you've crossed over before, right? There it is. Yeah. You can see it you're like, holy shit, this is okay. Sure. Um, and this you can you can also see that uh, on the far northern side, uh, you can see that strange, uh, was it circular? Um, uh, no, there's like a, like a panel basically that has a crescent moon shining down uh, upon an ibis, right? And you know immediately where you are. But the, yes, yes, but the room in the but the room is dominated by a large fifteen foot tall statue of Thoth. However. <laughs> Um, the, the, the statue is made out of solid basalt. And when you came in here the last time he was squatting with his knees drawn up to his chest and his arms were bowed and his, um, uh, uh, so it, and also this statue of Thoth has a baboon head. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he was squatting with his knees drawn up to his chest and his arms were bowed with his uh, hands resting on his knees. However, now he's still squatting, but his arms are, are straight out, straight out in parallel. All right. Directly in front of you, about 20 feet away, basically in this in direct center of the room, right next to the statue is a perfect globe of magical darkness. All right. And waiting about to, to wade into that darkness from the south is a very strange looking creature. It actually looks to be about a, um, uh, let's see, how tall are they? Um, looks to be about like human size, but it is, it looks like a, an actual organic manifestation of the statue of Ibis headed Thoth, right? It's as tall as like Onweir or Yost, a like human size, but it has an ibis head, but it is it is not stone, right? It's made out of, of flesh and it has like the array, like the, the big like necklace around its neck, right? And the, like the kilted uh, form and the muscled tones and all that kind of stuff, you know, but its hands end in these long claws and it's basically like just starting to move slowly forward into the darkness. And you can see that it's, it's, it's curved beak is like gaping open with its like little tongue uh, in the back of its gullet uh, facing out as it's about to and move forward. I, and it, do I and see it, a goblin? Uh, so no, you don't see a goblin, but you could hear whimpering coming from within that ball of darkness. Ugh. Okay. Uh, the wow. darkness is, um, about 15 foot. It's a 15 foot sphere all the way around. Okay. So it's quite yeah. large. And you see the things like it whips its head around as it sees you like its beak and it's like, Argh! And it opens its beak and it, its pupils are bright white with no, um, its eyes, I mean, are bright white with no pupils. Uh, Damn it, Ted, it made its spot check. Yeah, right. Um, 
I gotta say, this feels like somebody else's problem in here. You know, this is yeah. uh, <laughs> the the other the other difference in this room too than when you first time you were here is that when you came into it the first time it was completely dark. However, there are torches. Uh, you remember noting that there were torches on the northern uh, there were sconces on the northern eastern side. Torches have been placed in those sconces and they are lit. Um, uh, the oh, and uh, this is of course is super important. The you can see that there are two other goblins that are actually like one in the far south and he looks like he's about to trip over into the chasm and another one that's um, at the north, which is really near that uh, the uh, sign of the moon over the Ibis. And uh, it's they're basically like stumbling around and uh, one is like, like feeling, a, the one in the south is like feeling around like he can't really see or he's like dazed or something like that. And it looks like he's imminently about to just cast himself over to the chasm. And the other goblin is basically about to run into the wall in the northern side. And, but they but they aren't whimpering they they're were, just sort of like days or they're sort of like wandering around like completely like just out of their mind so not like they're blind but as if they're just whacked out of their heads uh-huh yeah okay and the uh, the ibis headed uh fleshy thought is looking at me yeah it just whipped its head around and looked at you yeah um yeah goblins are the worst right i'm gonna shut the door and yeah. <laughs> uh, let them sort that problem out. That's that's their problem, not mine. Wow. Uh, I mean, that's cold. They they're the ones who want to expand their territory. They got to pay yeah. the price. They wander into the room and they wake up the statue and create a globe <laughs> of darkness. What did they expect? I mean, come on. <laughs> um, but I will to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna close the door and like lean against it and wave the guys up and explain what's going on there in a whisper. And if they feel like we should do something, no, they don't want to either. Yeah. Okay. So you uh, hear from beyond the door, you hear a Wilhelm scream. Yeah. As, <laughs> as one goblin goes over the edge and then right. you, you hear a vicious rending followed by a high pitched shriek cut immediately short. Okay. That's the one inside the globe. I don't know where he got a globe of darkness spell. I guess he's a wizard goblin or something, but it's, he's not our problem anymore. So there's we one still. We know the Ibis thing cast it, Ted. Yeah, I know. Um, okay. So, Mike, one thing that we have never experimented with here, but we, we've talked about and we've always suspected it, is that the positions of the arms is important on Thoth statues. Yep. We've moved the one at the top of the pyramid to open up the door. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've moved one other to open up the hatch that went somewhere. Um, possibly the one maybe uh, was somewhere near that sort of the crypt of sarcophaguses, I think. But not the not sarcophagus, the niches where we found the rats and things. I think there was one there we manipulated the arms, but I can't remember for sure. And we think those guys are all related. But here's the reason why, Ted, we don't play with those. When you get them wrong, the statues come alive and beat you to death. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, wondering if that's what's going on here. Right. Well, don't forget that now, there's two different things, right? There's a baboon squatting statue of stone made right. out of basalt. And then there's actually like an ibis-headed um, a physical thing, like right. a creature, like an organic creature attacking these goblins. If I'm remembering like, correctly, the darlings told us that they bucked around with that statue and found out. Yes. And smashed one of them flat, right? And right. something about that's why we have that door marked next next to it. And there's an X on the map where the darling person got, like, you know, wrecked. That was a smeared so, person, yeah. Yeah, so... So anyway, here's the thing. That was, that was uh, Cassandra. Thing. Yeah. There's... there's a, John, tell us again the, on the north wall a picture of the moon and an ibis, right? Yeah. So to be clear, it's a, it's a little confusing. So there are three doors that lead out of the room, but then yes. next to those doors are these three images. They are not on the doors themselves, which you marked right. with like little green slots, right? Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. So the there's, one that I just eye. I just showed because you're coming from that eastern door that you probably wouldn't immediately see the ones that are on the eastern wall, right? Like you would have immediately like seen the one of them. Yeah. So it's a moon shining, a, a crescent moon shining down upon an ibis. And then the other ones, which you kind of remember, um, is uh, well, you have them written down there, actually, a, a baboon yeah. clubbing a crocodile. You've seen that that particular scene depicted a number of times, which you right. uh, you've attributed to the. Um, the set stuff. Yes, exactly. The Thoth versus set priesthoods. Um, and then um, 
the one on the south southern part of the eastern wall was a single blue eye. Right. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, like, if they triggered something going through the north door, and that's why we've got like this darkness and an ibis thing happening. You know, maybe right. Uh, I mean, the room could just be full of traps. I don't really know. Um, it, it feels to me like if you dink around with those doors or the statue in the wrong way, something bad happens. And maybe what the goblins did is they tried to open that door, one of the doors. Like, I feel like um, and they summoned something, right, or some sort of trap. I'm not a wizard. That seems to me like a summoned creature of some sort. I'm a little worried it's going to come looking for us. It saw you. So do we want to like set our spears and get ready to attack anything that comes through that door and wait, give it a turn. And to be, I should also point out to um, uh, Ted that I was describing specifically what you would have taken in sensor sensorially, you know, like, like when you open the door immediately, you know, you would have taken in the conflict and then the, like the immediate changes in the room. Right. So once again, it's a, it's a cursory look. Yes. Yes. No, I, uh, I understood that. Thank yeah. you. Um, right. And then of course I closed the door quickly and I'm mm -hmm. just trying to think like, because what I was assuming was that the statue was beating a goblin to a pulp. Right. Then I opened it up and that is not what I saw. But the reason I mentioned this uh, about the arms is in that room I just looked at with the statue, uh, or sorry, the fresco of Thoth, you know, with um doo -doo -doo -doo, i wrote it down here left arm pointing forward right arm at his side press the, the priests kneeling at the seat of the baboon you know that's different than what the we used to open the pyramid at the top of the debouchement tunnel right that was i think both arms out or something right i believe so i can double check um, yeah you do know that like the the, the statue had been changed in, in this particular room to, to both parallel out Mm -hmm. right um, so so maybe they were manipulating the arms of the statue and summoned the ibis monster like i mean that could be the other thing right? exactly that's like, that was my original thought and then i remember the moon uh over my ibis picture right i think they were fucking around and, and are finding out yes right. um so my I, big concern I, I, is that that thing's not coming through the door uh, i'm just gonna be real clear i just want to live through the night <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want that thing to come in and catch us with our pants down while we're playing with something else. No. If it's a summoned creature, it's going to go away after a little while. If it's not a summoned creature, well, we're going to need more people to deal with it because it's like some sort of magical crack casting monster. Right? Get ugly. Yeah. So it's so, um, both uh, both arms. So the statue at the top of the pyramid to get down the the way down to the debouchement is both arms have to be parallel to the floor, which is exactly the position that they are in current currently. Although this is a baboon headed version. Right. And what's the one at the top? Uh, uh, Ibis. Although you remember in the far corners of the, of like the supporting platform, uh, the supporting roof are like little baboons. Right. Fa yeah. Facing, facing the, uh, pyramid, yeah. facing the statue. All right. Yeah, why don't we ready spears and weapons and stand here for a turn? In case it comes and, through, John. In case it comes through. If it busts okay. through, we're ready to fight it. If it doesn't bust through, it's not coming after a turn. And we go about our business and poor, poor okay. goblins, but not my problem. All right. You wait tensely, uh, tensely for a turn, and it does not appear to emerge. Um, you... Uh, you do hear a, another scream as if a goblin has been pitched over the chasm. Yeah. So it fades away. Okay. Within in that turn. All right. Give it a turn okay. after we hear the, the goblin die. Like then, then we give it a turn. So then, so two turns total, you're going to wait behind the door think so because my, my feeling is is like um it's gonna once it finishes up in there ted that's when it might come looking for us right so um maybe we just wait like 10 minutes after we, we hear the last scream and then and then we move on with our yeah. life yeah, yeah i dig it i dig it i want mean, to go loot those sarcophagi anyway yeah is now a good time for the red paint i think mike yeah 
<laughs> what did you want to do with that again, man? Well, uh, I, I think that it's time we start claiming some territory. And when we, you know, we haven't really done a lot of graffiti down here and everybody else does, you know? Right. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, right here on the wall, you know, AV club, stay out, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Or how about, um, on we are eats rocks or, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, let's do uh, it, man. Um, uh, and Garalad killed Isocritus. I'm going to write that on the wall too. <laughs> Garalad killed Isocritus. <laughs> so okay. while we're waiting for yeah, the Ibis to come out, we're going to paint some stuff on this hallway. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's marking your territory just like everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Got it. All right. Um, done. Paint a line on the floor and we cross this line, you die. Okay. <laughs> cross this line, you die. Um, anyway. Let's see. Assuming okay. we don't get eaten by the monster. So at the end of the second, so at the end of the second turn, soon after you yeah. hear the sound of the second goblin go over the chasm, um, you hear a slight sound. What appears to be um, stone, uh, uh, like like very like a zinc. Um, you just hear like a, a sound like that, and then it's, everything becomes very very quiet. Let's open the door again. I'm gonna. I, that's what I was I'm thinking. Betting the statue is moved. Yeah, I'm going to open the door uh, and look. Okay. You look into the room. Things have definitely changed. Uh, there is no sphere of darkness. The statue remains uh, with its arms parallel to the ground. Okay. The creature is nowhere to be seen. All right. There is a smear of mangled goblin corpse directly in the center of where that sphere of darkness used to be. There is no sign of the other two goblins. There appears to be a cluster of broken cobwebs in the northwest corner, which you are very familiar with. You should search that goblin body, man. Now, the uh, to be clear as well, now that you're sort of in the room... And there are there are scots there are torches on the northern and eastern, so they're basically illuminating at least this side of the chasm. Um, the uh, uh, the floor is basically clear because there's a lot of traffic through here. Um, the there are lots of images on the walls. They are all uh, very hermetic in nature, uh, dealing with strange Gnostic principles and magical knowledge. Um, human forms, unlike a lot of the areas of the Thoth, uh, of the precincts of Thoth, are largely absent, but there are moons of all phases everywhere. Lots of baboons, ibises, pentagrams, circles, and numbers, and many talismanic sequences um, are ubiquitous around the room. Hmm. That, that's a lot to try and trans while you're talking <laughs> it's just more like a uh, it's more like the vibe is what i'm trying to get across it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's definitely like dedicated to thought there's no doubt like the baboon and the ibis imagery is like everywhere right but it's accompanied by a lot of these gnostic and magical symbols um you know like ma like magical arcane lore now this is not right. like that mysterious you've seen something similar in one of the shrines in the hall of shrines okay yeah and it I isn't that it is an aspect of thought um, that you've come across before, um, as Thoth, like the the uh, you know his he's 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 known for to be like the god of knowledge, right? But but in, in one particular aspect is like um, is like secret knowledge, right? Um, right. Which which can be attributed to like arcane knowledge as well. Oh. So, Mike, if the statue is still in the same position as the first time I looked, but we heard a stone shink sound. Makes me think there's a secret door in here. I agree. I think that's 100% true. Um, maybe more than one. Maybe like three. Maybe right behind the pictures. Right. Uh, here's my other thing about that. There's really only one f like wall it could be on. Just kind of going off our map. It probably has to be along that northern wall or potentially on the upper part of the eastern wall or the part of that like one corner of the southern wall there's not that many walls that it could possibly be on that would be right. um make sense for the map right right which all coincidentally is right where those three pictures are exactly but those pictures all correspond with the doors through the doors we've been through and we've kind of figured them out unless um, they don't correspond with the doors unless they correspond with the secret door behind the picture 
I, my only worry here, Ted, is that we're going to either have to fight the statue or we're going to have to fight um, that monster. Um, we could go check out the, the sarcophagi. <laughs> what do you think? Come on, uh, man. Uh, all right. Um, I mean, John, I what's the deal with the door to the north? What's the door deal with the door to the north? Was that one of the darlings went there? Oh, you know what, Ted? No. The darlings what? said that when they were screwing around with that statue, that a something opened up and came out. I don't think it was the statue that killed them. Maybe it was. They said something came out of the wall. They didn't know what it was. And it came out of that corner in the in the north. And east part of the section there, right where the body is. I do not remember hearing it that way. I remember the statue killing them. But John was uh, just nodding, man. Check out the brain on Brad. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, it, it, that it, was it, right, right, John. It, it, well, your recall of something coming out of the wall is correct. Okay. Um, the, the the exact location, who knows? I mean, but that you, I mean, you know, the X is definitely where Cassandra's body was was found. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. Okay, well, Can you search that goblin corpse, is... John. Yeah, there's like there's nothing on it. Okay, it's just you, spear. useless shit. Okay. You can have like if, if you want a short sword or a spear, you can have it. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. All right. Um, all right. Let's. You're you're right. I think uh, better part of valor. Close the door again. We've learned a lot about this room. There's more to learn. Have you though? Let's go back and look at the sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, John? Have you though? <laughs> Okay, uh, so, all right, so leave, I'm going to say investigation of the room. Uh, yeah, it's going to take another turn. Um, so it is now okay. squarely at 7 p.m., and don't mind me. And we get exhausted at midnight? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got a little time yet to get back into the stairwell room and get to bed. Um, okay, so back to the sarcophagus room. So before, before we go into the room, John, we want to look for the spear traps that we've seen on this level. Yep. Okay. Um, and uh, okay, so let's see. Center of the room, three sarcophagi, frescoes of priests kneeling at the foot of a seated baboon. Left arm. What what wall is Thoth picture on? The western one. No. On in what yeah. what room? In the sarcophagus room that we're, we're looking at, uh, we see a picture of Thoth seated. Is he on a particular wall? And I assume this is like the side view type of deal, right? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, the so side, the classical see. Egyptian like side view. Yeah. Um, so he's seated, and his left arm is pointing forward. Um, and it's it's there's multiple depictions of this. Basically, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not like there's one picture of Thoth no. pointing and I could look no. and say, hey, look, he's pointing at that keyhole right there or something yeah. like that. And in, in fact, yeah. it's like you kind of had to piece together that there are multiple depictions of it from the remnants all over the room. Like some of it like only showed like some of the priests, I some see. of it showed like the baboon head only, sure. you know, but, but then you can kind of look around. You can kind of piece together like, oh, I see it's a repeated pattern of this uh, act taking place. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, Once again, this is just like a cursory look, you know. Just yep. Kind of looking around. Traps on the floor, John. Any holes in the floor for spears to come through? Uh, on the on the floor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So looking at the floor, uh, you don't. Uh, Yo sort of nods in approval. He's like, "Yeah, this looks very similar to the room where we lost Helga." Mm -hmm. Into the south. Yep. I don't see anything Not on the too, ground. Not too far away. Okay. All right. Um. um no exits the out of the room. I'm sorry, which what did you say? Where are the sarcophagi again? So the sarcophagi, their heads are facing west, and they're directly in the center of the room, equally spaced. There are three of them. Like so north to south, right? So, yeah, north One, to two, south. Three. But they're they're yeah. arrayed, they're like you know what I mean? Like the head is west and then the feet are east. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And stone uh boxes, basically. Stone boxes, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Lying right on the ground or are they on like little pedestals and shit? They are on the ground. Okay. Yeah. And it's very okay. similar, very similar um to the to the, the trapped room from before. 
Yep. Right. And on that so one, we... This, Tettles, I got an idea. Why don't we tie a rope around the top edge of one the nearest sarcophagi, take it out of a, out into the hallway, and then all three of us pull on the rope from there? It's not bad. Um, take a turn to do that. So, yeah, Mort's got rope. I have well, how, how, okay, rope. so without um, without moving the lid at all, how are you going to actually attach a rope to the top? Well... We're going to do a, I'm an Eagle Scout, two half hitches. We're going to tie the rope into a big loop, right? And then mm -hmm. you cinch it down really tight so mm -hmm. that, I mean, I assume that the lid is like yay thick, right? Yeah. Okay. So we exactly put the what rope I was thinking. in the middle. Just go like all the way around the whole lid. Mm hmm. Okay. And, I got you. I can, I can visualize it. Almost that, yeah. like a lasso, John, right? Like yeah. a yeah. lasso. And got then it. we're just going to go, we'll go out into the corridor and try and keep the rope as straight as possible so it's not chafing on the corners and then we're just going to try and pull it straight out okay i assume that the southernmost sarcophagus yep okay. that would be the thing but before we i mean i don't mind tying the rope first but before we start pulling on it uh we have checked sarcophagus before and been able to find traps and triggers and things like yeah. that so we should actually search the room for traps and triggers and 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 things like that so well we just searched know. the floor and we did right. find the mechanisms on those other sarcophagi well you didn't spend um, a turn you were looking at the floor for obvious holes you did not see yeah any. i think we should spend okay. time okay looking checking the floor checking the walls you know uh mm -hmm. and and especially checking the sarcophagus for any like trigger points or trip wires or okay so do you want to have like gorn right. spending a turn attaching the rope while mort and go and Yost look at the floor and wall or something like that. Um, yeah. So why don't we actually have me do the? I'll be one of the checkers um, because yeah, I had found I those traps in the other sarcophagi. So I kind of am looking for stuff like that, John. Yeah. Okay. Yost will do the rope. Okay. Yeah. All right. So during he that was, turn, uh, he was a junior barbarian ranger. You know, he has many very good skills with rope. <laughs> okay. <sound> so, awesome. <laughs> as Yost is attaching the rope, and you guys are looking carefully around, Gorn, you are looking on the walls, and you can on the western walls in particular, uh, directly facing each one of the sarcophagus. So there are three. There are three very small round holes that are basically at like chest height like human chest height dwarf head height. Uh, can i take an iron spike and drive one into the hole sure yeah nothing happens that's great <laughs> but it goes in it goes in yeah okay like the, the very tip i mean it's like a very small little hole you know sure. what I mean? so your iron spike yeah, yeah, can't yeah. even go all the way in so you that's think they're fine. darts or spears or something darts or gas could be gas, gas yeah gas so, is bad Three, one hole per sarcophagus or three holes per sarcophagus? Uh, one hole per, so three holes total, one hole per sarcophagus. Okay. Okay. Um, I do it to the other two holes, John. Yeah. Okay. So there are three spikes now in each, uh, in each one of the holes. Yeah. Yep. And, and we didn't find any triggers on the sarcophagus themselves? Not on the sarcophagus, no. Um, I'm going to pour one out for Atticus later. He would have loved this shit. Let's, oh, um, poor now let's do our rope trick. Okay. Okay, so you get right, so back we'll out of the room. John's you... smiling. John's like smiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, play uh, out some rope and back up. Okay. All right. So you back out of the room and you pull it off. Um, and um, as the sarcophagus lid uh, hits the ground, pieces of stone like chip off with a huge thunk. You can hear immediately after the excuse me, uh, after you hear the stone lid hit the ground, you hear from the western wall, you hear a series of like tink, 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 um, like, like echoing within the walls itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, and then like the dust settles and everything's quiet. Nothing comes out of the, of the coffin. Now, um, in that span of time, uh, in that, um, it, like, as you're sort of like assessing, like, okay, I think it's okay. Right. And you're here, you hear, from the western door, you hear a uh, a series of light scratchings, just like a. God damn it! From the other side of the door, it's like soft, but like persistent. Undead goblin corpse. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. They bite your knees. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, um. Uh, God damn it. I'm just trying to loot some sarcophagi here, you fuckers. <laughs> it's dangerous down right. in the dungeon. Who knew? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Mike, because I can tell this will bring great joy to your little dwarven heart, Mort and Yost will guard the hallway while you look inside the sarcophagus. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the generosity of what, what a gift, Mort. What a gift. <laughs> <laughs> <Oui>. <laughs> All right, John, I'm going to I want to try and see if there's any like um I'm gonna look for holes in the ceiling too. Okay. Uh cursory or detailed? Mm, detailed. Okay. Another turn goes by. Um you can confidently say that there are no holes in the ceiling. Okay. While I'm doing that, why don't you guys go peek through the door? Was the scratching on the door? Was the scratching on the door, John, or was it just in the room? On the door. On the door itself. Like, it was very obvious. Like, you could really hear it. Like, it's very persistent. And, like, throughout that entire 10 minutes that you're, like, really carefully looking at the ceiling, it never stopped. Right. So, like, we got to look, dude. We can't. We can't. (laughs) We got to sleep down here, bro. (laughs) That's true. Like, I'm imagining uh, Mort and Yost at the sort of the intersection there, just to the south of the sarcophagus room. They're like 40 feet from the door. Mm-hmm. The, seriously listening to it scratch for 10 minutes while Mike stares at the ceiling? Yeah, yeah. This is the worst job ever, Yost says. And it's not like, it's not like rhythmic, right? But it is persistent. Yeah. Like, it never stops. And it sounds like multiple multiple things scratching at the door gives me a bad vibe man you gotta look you gotta look it's just it's just like a bad after school special you gotta go look through the door spiders it's it's totally spiders every once in a while you see you like the door like shudders a little bit in the jam but not like not like someone's trying to break through just like so like there's like a weight being pressed against it for a brief second wait all right mort's gonna creep up to the door as quietly as possible and and listen like ear to the door and see if he can tell like yeah that's i can hear the chittering of spider mandibles or the squelching of you know right. undead goblin innards or whatever right sure yeah you don't hear anything like that it's just um uh every once in a while you have to pull your ear back because like the door shutters a little bit um and it just it, it's the same thing but just louder because your ears against the door but strangely like there's you don't hear any sound of you know, breath or rasping or uh, uh, clawed feet or anything like that. It's just like the constant, like, scratching at the door. I hate that so much. I hate that so much. <laughs> look in the sarcophagus, dude. All right, let me go look in the sarcophagus, John. Okay. Maybe we'll find a plasma rifle. Okay. Uh, inside the sarcophagus, as you lean over, you see that there is indeed a wrapped humanoid figure, very similar to many, many moons ago when you looked mm. in that chamber in the south. Okay. Uh, yeah. you know, ancient wrapped stain bandages all the way around this. In- can't determine the sex or, or even the, even the kindred of, of whatever this was. Um, but it looks to be a mummy, uh, of some sort. There is, um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's basically it's like all wrapped up. Stay dig around in there, bud. Yeah. Get your little dwarven man. fingers in there and find all the yeah. You don't the see and ushabti. You see nothing no, else no, solid I... in the in the in the uh, in the sarcophagus, um, and nothing glinting or anything like that. Okay, uh, John, I'm going to take my spear and jam it through its head. Oh damn! All right. Just <laughs> desecration. All right. Just, just desecrate the car. Okay. All right. So a big like poof of dust like kind of comes up. You know what I mean? Um, and it uh but it, it it reacts normally like an inanimate object would to your spear puncturing it. Okay. Using the Is tip of my spear, I'm I'm gonna shuffle around in there and see if uh if we, see if there's anything underneath it or inside the wrappings. Okay, so just fucking tomb raiding, just getting at it. <laughs> Gord gets in there, gets dirty, right, just just desecrating a a holy tomb. That's cool. Uh, just ripping it up. Uh, so indeed, as you as you rip open the bandages, you actually find that um, uh, on the shriveled, uh, leathery remains of whatever whatever uh, pr- probable fe- uh, priest this was, um, there is a. A piece of uh, jade jewelry and a single garnet as well. The garnet is worth uh, 
uh, yeah, the garnet is worth 125 gold. So that's a pretty fucking nice garnet, actually. And the, let's see, um, let me just roll some dice here real quick. You find the piece of jade jewelry is worth 300 gold. Solid. And let's see, what's called this? We call this the Northern Sarcophagus Room? Yeah. Unless we find one again to the farther north. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just need to keep them straight on the treasure tracker. I hear you, um, dude. You might want to just draw some I rectangles in that room, Ted, just to indicate that there are sarcophagus, sarcophagi in there like you did the other one. I should put some little sarcos in there. That's a good yeah. idea. Let's right. just do you gonna do it for the next one or what? You do it for the next one. Um well we unless you want... what is what's scratch scratching at the door. I'm gonna I say mean, um listening at the same time raiding the body took a turn. Yeah. Okay. I'd rather raid bodies than open that door. Okay. John, I'm going to take the loop off the first um the first sarcophagus lid, and I'll put it around the second one in the same fashion. Mm -hmm. And then, well, <laughs> nice kitty. Kitty. Hey, kitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is bass. Got kitty. Kitty yeah. brought bass. Actually, um, this, right, is, so uh, this is um, Nosferatu. Nosferatu. This is Nosferatu. Nice. Um, so then I put the loop around the second sarcophagus lid, and then when we have that set up, I will leave the room hand the other end to Yost, and he and um, his iron fuse and my pitiful ones will pull that sarcophagus lid off. Okay, so that'll be another turn to get that all rigged up and done. And the exact yeah. same thing happens. So you pull that off, um, and the you hear the same sequence from the from the middle hole. You hear like a tink, 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 tink. Right? Same thing happens. Okay. It sounds like uh, darts hitting your, uh, hitting your spark. That's what I said. That's what I think too. John, yeah. did, on the first sarcophagus, can I go look for the mechanism that's triggering the darts? Uh, so you were, before, when you were checking for traps earlier, you found no triggers at all on the sarcophagus itself, on the sarcophagus. Mm -hmm. Is it, yeah. it must be on the floor or something? Something about the pressure. The lid hits it? Oh, maybe. Well. And when you were searching the room thoroughly, the you were, you you, oh. you were you were you were said you were searching for holes in the wall, which you found. Right. Yeah. So now that the lid is off the sarcophagus, are there any buttons that release when the sarcophagus lid is taken off that would trigger those traps or something like that? Not on the sarcophagus. You're confident okay. that there is no there is no mechanisms on the on the sarcophagi. Hmm. Okay. So John, I'm same thing. I'm gonna kind of like peer over the edge of my spear at the ready. Um and same See a body. Same body. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jam it right in its head okay. <laughs> again. Same thing happens. Nothing happens. All right. Same thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna turn that butt that into bone stew, and I'm gonna look around in the trash. Okay. Um. You. Um. Uh. It's gonna take another turn as you move through, and you find the exact same thing, slightly different in make, you know, uh, in cut and all that kind of stuff. But you find another piece of jade worth three hundred and another. Uh, garnet worth 125. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to set up the rope for the third one. Before I trigger it, though, before we pull on it, I want to look, examine the floor next to the sarcophagi for pressure plates. Okay. That'll take a, uh, a turn. Ah, okay. No, no, I got it. Look for a pressure plate under the sarcophagus that as it becomes lighter. Mm, maybe can I can I check for both John in that same turn? Sure. Okay. You, okay. I just want to Ted. I just want to try and build like a body of knowledge about the the traps yeah. that they use here. So absolutely, I'm I'm definitely down with it. Okay. It is now eight p.m. Uh, you find no indications of any mechanisms whatsoever on Sounds the circuit. Is this scritchy scratchy about? thing still going on in the door? Yes. So Mort, um, as you're listening, the, the scritch scratching right. continues. However, uh, you could hear that it's lighter now. Uh, like there's not as many are scratch scritch scratching on the door, but you hear in a because your ears are like right pressed up against it. You could hear that it is continuing at some other place in the room, as well as where you are. The the, the door we've already been through, maybe. 
Um, which would mean they would come if they if something opened that door, they would go down the hall and end up in the fountain room. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we got to scout it out, dude. I hate to say it, but we got to look. Be aware too that you have never actually come into the statue room and exited out of one of those doors. Right. Maybe they're oh. locked from the other side. Yeah, we absolutely have. The one that's just north of the the eye picture, we have used that door. Or just now. Yeah, but that door was that no. door. Ted, we went no, no. out that way and we did not come back through that way. But just now you did. But that door was but you, that's because you would open the door and the door remained open. Yeah. No, no. Like last week when we were escaping Garalad after being prisoners, this is the route we came through. Yes, we you're absolutely right. Room. But we only passed from the east to the west. We never went from the west to the east. Correct. Oh, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I yeah. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, if it was confusing. Oh, these are maybe one-way doors. Maybe one-way doors without having the code. Oh. So then maybe opening it up is a bad it. idea. I am definitely not opening it. Uh, okay. So you still have yet to rig the third one if you want to do that. Yep. I will rig it. And we will yeah. trigger it. Okay. So I say we rig it and do this before we do anything else because then we know we're, you know. Okay. So same same exact process, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to move forward. So um, a turn to rig it. Uh, you do it. And then Gorn, you find the exact same thing. You do the exact same uh, pattern. It yields the exact same results as another mummy with a garnet and jade with the exact same value. So you basically have, um, so that's a total of two turns that passed for that third last and last one you and you also hear like the tink 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 from the trap in the west west mm-hmm. um so exact same thing for all three so you now have three pieces of jade for a total of 900 and three pieces of garnet for a total of 375 got it um, yes cool those are how encumbering are those items um the garnets are uh, actually none of them are encumbering because they're all like okay. small little pieces they're not so like you want to split them three ways sure each, each of us carries uh Okay. They're all in encumbering, right. so if one person wants to keep them all, just to keep the. Well, I just it's more fun if, uh, uh, you know, everybody goes home with a little loot. Okay, so and then if uh, somebody falls off the cliff, then we don't lose all the money. Very right. nicely done with the trap evasion there, Gorn. Thank you. Okay, and Yost. What do you think about doing that? Um, do we have enough time? Bef- we have like an hour and a half before we start taking uh, a penalties, right, John? Uh, yeah, it more is. Now. Oh, I mean, more than that. It's um, 8.20 right now. But at some oh, point, we have, almost, gonna... we have three and a half hours. Let's go do that, that corridor south of the fountain room. Either that, Ted, or we look for secret doors in this room, which we did not do before. Uh, we can do both of those things. Um, I would say that... Um... Just because we have three hours or whatever before we're exhausted does not necessarily mean we should use it all because at some point we're going to, like, we need sleep. Um, and we're going to be, you know, if we if we need our full eight hours or whatever and they're waking up at 6 a.m. and we're, you know, just to get annoying. So can, um, can I just be a little meta here, though, Ted? I'm trying to hit that. um feet of exploration while there's only two of us here <laughs> we want to go mm-hmm. run into some rooms here man and get some right. XP bonuses. yeah five, five, what you're talking about. five, well, five gets you the thing so you've got you got one two uh two basically i uh i might count the the re-entering of the statue room as a third okay because it was um, it was significantly different Let's go, man. Come on. Yep. Ted. This yep. is not the okay. time for Waffle House. All right. Waffle. Secret doors? <laughs> you want to do secret doors or not? Yeah, we'll do a secret doors check in this room, John. Uh, okay, what are you looking for specifically? Otherwise, you have to roll. Uh, I'm going to specifically looking for any kind of secret door on the north wall. Ted, you search the eastern wall, the western or the western wall. The eastern wall is full of traps and mechanisms and shit, so I doubt there's anything there, but I could be wrong. There's got to be access panels, but yeah, probably not. Um I'm definitely looking for, you know, the kind of things we found before of like, we found wires, we mm-hmm. found the eyes, yep. there are statues or there are depictions of Thoth on these walls. Um, okay. Yep. 
So I'm going to be, like, for, for I'm gonna be tapping John for hollow spaces on the wall. Okay. You know, and I'm, where the plaster is crumbling, I'm looking for, you know, possible transitions of stonework or anything like that. Cool. Awesome. I love it. So you don't need the rule it takes the turn. You can confidently say that there are no secret doors in here. However, you do come across on the Western wall. You come across what appear to be the catches right next to the holes that allow you to deactivate those traps. Yeah. <laughs> now you find it. Jeez. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After All right. Fact. Well, oh, do you take your spikes back, by the way? Or no? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I don't stand right in front of them when I do that. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Comes flying yeah. out. Okay. Cool. You can see, uh, like, right near the, 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 the edge of the hole, there is a cluster of small needles um, that are kind of pointing out toward yeah. you that are sort of like bent and crimped. I love it. And, uh, uh, do we, uh, you know, taste the poison and go, oh, huvate is very dangerous. You know? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Ovitos, that's what I Ovitos. I just watched that movie with the kids. All right, let's uh, let's go hit the fountain room. Are you going to drink from the yeah. fountain, Ted? Hell no. Did you see what happened to Avaricius? Yeah, you got like a wasting disease and almost died. That was bad news, okay, man. Back to the oh, fountain room is moving at 90. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll call it one turn to get to the corridor. Uh. Yeah, so one turn. Okay, so right now you are um, looking down the corridor and viewing the continual light and seeing the baboon spouting water uh, from the fountain. You are not in the room itself. Okay. I say we proceed up to the entrance to the room, at mm -hmm. which point, given the possibility of something coming in that other door that we've used, I do think we should listen here. Sure. We'll listen. Take a turn to listen. Uh, just from outside yeah. here in the corridor? Well, yeah. like, uh, I'm thinking, like, right here, John, right outside the fountain room. Got it. Okay. So, uh, Are we doing on lantern oil? Uh, right. <laughs> good question, Gordon. Right when you turn that corner, the lantern goes out. Huh. <laughs> That's well, kind okay. of amazing that you actually picked the right exact the exact turn when it goes out to ask me that. Well, I'm starting <laughs> to get a feel for your, your, your moves there, John. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um I have I've got four oil. torches on me, Tettles, and then I have no oil on me. I have it's oil. dark. I don't like the dock. Someone light something. I will refill, refill the lantern here while we're in continual light. Oh, yeah. There's and... no, she's not in the dark. <laughs> yeah, we're in continual light fountain room. But I will refill the oil, and um, if we're going to leave this room right away, I'll relight it right now. But otherwise, I'll wait a minute. Yeah. Let's wait until we finish our listen. Right. Yeah. Okay. He also doesn't like it. He doesn't like being in the dark, but okay. We're not, not in the dark. John, there's continual light. light in the fountain room. Oh, continual light. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Um we got you, Yost. Don't worry. All right. The listen um yields nothing. You just hear like the burbling of water coming from the fountain. Okay. Um also the, the sound of scratching has now <laughs> faded into the distance, although it never ended. Okay. All right. That sounds like a good um, job for Avaricios. <laughs> yeah, man. It's definitely a goblin corpse. All right. Uh, let's move up into the fountain room and look down the corridor to the west and uh, um, go south, yeah. young man. But then so, we're going to go south. Uh, you know what lies to the west. Um, it, what you can yeah. see is basically darkness. Um, uh, it's a, a little bit of the continual light kind of sheds probably about 20 feet to the west um but uh, nothing seems uh you don't see any infravision pinging or anything like that no infravision anywhere um uh to the uh oh to be clear too the fountain um has a clear liquid coming from it you at one time you got like true seeing i believe um yeah at, at, at one and we also got a disease yes right so you know there are multiple effects from drinking from it so let me know if you want to do anything there Nope. No. Okay. All right. Maybe before we go to bed. <laughs> you know what? God damn it. May the spirit of David take over my body, John. I'm gonna take a big old sip of that. Oh bottle. my goodness. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Uh okay. So uh roll me a D twenty, please. May your may your fate be kind. Five. Nothing is more kind than a five. Okay. So you drink it. You feel no ill effects. You feel like a a, a third eye has uh, has 
opened in the middle of your forehead as a as an extra sense um, that you've never experienced before, Gorand, in all your days, um, as the the realm of magic suddenly suddenly opens to you, as as it feels like all magical ores is as as uh, are are able to be seen by you by this third eye. That's you, awesome. You have yeah. detect magic for the foreseeable future. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. Do we just uh, run back into the fucking uh, room with the with the spear of magic element and go look? Uh, you're first of all the reason that you know that this is the case, Gorn. Uh, not only the sensation in your head, but also um, the the water, like the fountain, the wa the water in the fountain itself is like glowing, like a like a you know a blue aura, like really really strong. And then of Ooh. course, like all of you guys are like popping off, like with all your weapons and shit like that too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Let's go back to the Jackham's no, tomb. No. Let's try and get our. We need two more rooms. Let's go south. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. okay. So interestingly so, enough, the first time you south. hear, you never actually looked south. You just observed that there was something going to the yeah. south, but you were too enamored with your find to actually look. And you can see uh, when you look south that the continual light actually shows you that it goes for 20 feet in a 10-foot wide corridor uh, south before there is a door. Like the corridor ends in a door? Mm-hmm, ends in a door right on the southern wall. Okay, I'm gonna That's... listen at the door. Is oh. the door magical, Mike? The door is not magical. Is okay. okay, I'm gonna listen at the door. Taking a turn to listen at the door. Don't mind me. One moment, please. Don't mind me. I'll roll. Ooh, a one. Yeah, baby. What do I hear behind that door, John? Give me one second, please. He's reticulating some splines. Yeah, don't don't sweat. Yeah. Don't you sweat it. <laughs> you guys are mowing through the turns. I'm sweating now. Okay. Uh, yes, looking in, listening, I mean, to the door to the south. Give me a moment, please. Um, silence. You hear silence. Oh, I'm going to open that door, John. Okay. You open the door. Beyond. New tunnel. You find yourself, literally, there's only like, like, I'd say about four feet before it drops steeply off like a sheer cliff face 20 feet down into a natural cavern of enormous size. Like, so you open the door and you're like immediately blasted, not blasted, but just like, like a breeze hits you from like, like, you know, like the, like the natural airs in this cavern, but it's natural. You've been in these Archontean chambers for a while now. So it's like, a, it's like, like, what the fuck? Um, and it's dark, very dark. And you can see, um, but the but what pings immediately, and it's very strange. You actually take like a physical step back, Gorn, because you're not used to this new third eye opening, right? Mm -hmm. And you so like when you like the sensation is not like infravision, but there is a pulsing, deep, throbbing, intense amount of 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 arcane magic coming from approximately about forty feet in the direct center of uh, of this rough oblong cavern all right 40 feet ahead of you and it is a massive uh um square column that goes that that is coming up from below you because you're at basically there's 20 feet down below you and rising up above your head into the darkness and it's just like a throbbing like a deep sickly purple um as it's just like a, a long you know uh, uh, square column that, that gently tapers up right um, the chamber itself, with your infravision, you can make it out. Um, three, four, five. It actually goes at least sixty feet, so it, it, it uh, to the to directly in front of you. So sixty feet at least north to south, okay. and approximately, right. okay. approximately, and, and once again, Ted, this is very rough. It's like a, you know, it's like a natural cavern, roughly sixty feet um, east to west. Are we at the rough center? Uh, you were coming in from, yeah, yeah, but it, it, um, it, uh, it, it sort of, f you know, forms 60 feet, you know, no north to south around and sort of expands circularly around, you know what I mean? So it doesn't immediately like jut out like 60 feet. Yeah, you got Something it. Yeah, like that's, that? that's good, Ted. Yeah, yeah, it's actually good. And then there's this some is kind of part of the big main chasm that goes through the, the dungeon, right? This is not part of that giant chasm where we were talking to the troll dude and all that. 
this is a separate room. Might. Well, you, you have to take a look and make a make a guess for yourself. So this the thing in front of us though is a sheer drop. It's a we sheer drop, but it's down. twenty feet. Now the great chasm you didn't see have a bottom, right? Right. Yeah. Does the bottom look level, John, or does it look like a slope? Like if you go down it, you're going to slide Goonie style right off the edge of the, the world. No, no. Like I'm saying there's a, there's a ground that's 20 feet okay. down below you. It's rough. It's like rough stone, like unfinished. You know, so there's like a lot of like, you know, things that you kind of have to move around, but it's a roughly level 20 foot, uh, 20 feet below you floor. Okay. Okay. But there is this obviously constructed, wholly deeply magical thing in the middle of the room that rises up above you. Like that just, it just goes all the way up. Now, Ted, we're technically below the spaceship, right? Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And we're about directly below the spaceship. I'm guessing. Okay. So, uh, I should also note uh, that no, yeah, ooh. thereabouts. Okay, so I'm going by what you're sensing with infravision only, Gorn, right? And your new detect magic sense. Okay, mm -hmm. um, you you can tell that your third eye is giving this feeling as well. There is a palpable sense of evil that hangs over the cavern, and it's like a damp mist. Is basically like the sensation that you're getting. You can tell that it's like your your third eye is picking this up, um, and it's also manifesting on you as like a sense of uh, prickling skin, like all your hairs, like all your hackles are rising at the same time. And there's a looming, unseen menace um, in the cavern itself, obviously emanating. Um, you particularly can 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 tell from the obelisk, Mort um, behind. Morton Yost as well. You're also getting that, like your hairs are raising. Like you can sense that evil as well, despite not having the magical power. But only Goran can sense, like, like it's it's definitely coming from that obelisk. It's Necrons, Ted. Yeah, yeah. it's Necrons. Um, Yost is like, <laughs> like fuck these. I don't like it at all. Um, he's like, I don't. What is, what's beyond there? The only way to find out is to go in there. I think because our lantern won't reach far enough frankly i think the only way to find out is to pull a chicken out of laryl's sack and throw it at the pillar <laughs> I, think that's what, I think that's what we need to do ted i say we table this room for now yeah let's go look at the uh the Occam's, uh... <laughs> what's the matter <laughs> did, I say something, did i say something wrong this John, is actually we're, we're actually at time to... well come on yeah. just give us five more minutes five more minutes come on where, where yeah, let's we... go look at Jackin's stuff with the magic eye. Yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, oh Yakin. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. We're gonna you look want... at Yakin, and I just want to just peek into the room with the giant Thaw statue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, well those, those, those are in opposite directions. So where you where you want to go? I think we have to pick one. Okay, Yakin. Okay. So uh going back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one turn. Uh, so I'm going to say two turns to get back to Yak and the Prouds. Um, it is now 9.20 p.m. when you enter back into that room. you There is a palpable sense of relief the moment you walk back into the fountain room, right, and shut that door behind you. It's like, whoa. Ugh. Ooh, I wonder if that fountain yeah. room is actually like a, that continual light protects against something coming out of there. Maybe. Uh, um, anyways, yeah. darkness enshrouds you again as you move back into the eastern western corridor and uh, east western corridor, main corridor, and then you move back into the chamber with the Yak and the Proud using your lantern light. Um, you uh, look upon the remains of Yak and what remains. Um, let me find the key here. Uh, I got it. Um, <laughs> and you can see that none of the accoutrements are magical neither is the ivory box however <laughs> you can see a slight glow emanating from the seams underneath the lid of the box okay uh john i'm going to take the tip of my spear and i want to try and flip open that box <gasps> okay <clears throat> um you can you open it it opens up 
Okay, a glow <laughs> emanates from from uh, from inside the box. Do you look in? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> look in. Everyone, okay. look everyone in. just leans closer. Ooh. All right, so you're leaning over the sarcophagus now, looking, uh, looking yes. into the innards, right? Not touching it. Eat okay. my face, John. Yeah. Eat it. <laughs> you can see that lying in the midst of this ivory coffer is an incomplete set of what appeared to be very old, tarnished and charred set of bones, and they those bones themselves are glowing. Sweet human. Uh, looks to be, yeah, or humanoid of some sort, but yeah. Okay. All right, I'm satisfied. Magic bones. Magic bones. If I had my druthers, Ted, we'd also be running up to the fire room. Yeah, uh, dude. Well, I mean, well, can we just keep I'm playing? Going. What is, what do you, what do you do? What do you do with the coffer or the bones? I am going to very gently and reverently, unlike what I did to the other skeletons reach in with my grubby pit mitt and I'm going to touch one of the bones. Okay. Nothing happens when you touch the bone. Okay. It continues I'm to glow. Try and take, I'm going to try and take one out. Okay. You take one out. You, you Okay. When you take one out, the, the, the glow remains. However, uh, the uh, both the glow of the bone in your hand and the glow of the remaining, remaining bones in the coffer lessen slightly. What if I put it back in? Does it start to glow again? Yeah. They need to be a, so they're a set. They need to be together. Like the Ark of the Covenant. Cool. All right, John, I'm going to close the close the thing uh -huh. and lift the entire casket out. Okay. You do. Nothing happens. It, it's the normal weight that you expect. Okay. Ivory, so relatively light. And anything underneath it? Nothing underneath, just the red scale, the red banded male armor. Which is bupkis, which is nothing. Okay, I'm gonna take that casket back up to um, where we're sleeping. Okay, how are you? How are you like holding the the casket, the the coffer? Oh, directly in front of me. I'll sling my shield over my back and pass my um, spear to someone else, and I'll just carry it with two hands. Okay, when you kind of hold it in front of you carefully, and as you move your way back, you feel so you're you're going through some shit Gorn because it's like you've got this third eye that just <laughs> opened and in addition you feel a that you are um also uh completely like um not completely but you feel like an additional aura of magical protection has basically surrounded you in in like in, in some some amount around you at the same time um you straight up got a relic dude I think it's a sanctuary spell. I think I, I think I've, it's it provides a sanctuary or something like that. Yeah, you're like radiating this like arcane power <laughs> for a dwarf right now. Basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're the dwarf. it continues as you reverently hold the the coffer in front of you and and bring it back up the corridor to the north to the stairwell and present it. Um, and uh, all the NPCs who are in the NPC cloud remark upon your very much changed appearance right now, Gorn. As you, as you look like some wise sage, you know what I mean, coming out of the out of the darkness. You know, yeah. Do I actually have a third eye, or is that just uh, like it's, a, it's a flavor thing? But uh, yeah, you, oh, okay. you, you have the tech magic until you have the ability to detect magic until I say otherwise, and it's continually up. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. So first thing we do next session is everyone looks through their backpacks to see what they're carrying that we're wondering about. For example, Yost's two big, big bronze keys in his backpack. What about that gold statuette that we found tonight? Yeah. Is it reading magic? magic? Uh, the gold statuette is not magical. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, yep. you know, the thing <clears throat> about it is that is we can't pick up the next session like because if this thing lasts six hours and we spend six hours sleeping i'm gonna kill myself so we still have like two hours before i'm like exhausted and i need to go look at the fire room the laryl's room again i don't know what else something else maybe thought the big statue the big of thought. thought yeah yeah anyway all right which is also a room we did not search for secret doors but anyway so that ended up perfect. You were you're right back at where you started, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, That's awesome. exactly what we set out to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. done. So we'll uh, except we're now like nine or six thousand gold pieces richer. Yeah, yeah. Success all yeah, around through very very smart play. So uh, we'll <laughs> leave it there and we'll pick it up with the rest of the group. But who needs them really? <laughs> yeah, <a> bunch of, <laughs> the team. Bunch of layabout. Yeah.
<laughs> well done. So uh, yeah, that'll that'll do it for episode 41. So uh, thank you all for watching. Don't forget that you've been watching 3D6 down the line and that you should definitely like and subscribe and pass on the word because we are the most criminally underwatched actual play series on YouTube. So pass the word, please. And until next time, have a great week, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thanks, John.